Yo yo, uh, 2023. What's up? Oh, it's perfect timing. Uh, it's it's the prayer. This looks European now. Cool. Anyway, um, saw some uh, shark today in the market, so I'm gonna be eating shark and uh, some oysters. Looking more Slavic. Do you think so? I thought Slavic is more like a shaved head. It tastes basically exactly like beef steak. Really, there's hardly any difference, except that it has a somewhat fishy smell. It's really like beef. If you want to know what country, um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say. Hey man, uh, hey vandalism, what's up? Saw your latest video, it was good, it was funny. Uh, thanks for all the compliments. Mm. 
my New Year's resolution to be permanent resident in Hull. I wish, man. I wish I could live in the UK. You can only stay for six months, unfortunately. I always go to Hull for like six months in a year, and then I have to leave. I always cry. Then I just dream and wait until I can return for another six months. Basically, my whole life just revolves around waiting for the six months to go back to Hull. shark as i said yeah i was at the market and there was just this big piece of fish uh, from the ta uh, kind of from the tail cut off so i asked him what it is and he said shark so i got one kilogram of it because it's rare to find it Uh, no, it's not salty at all. As I said before, it's really just like beefsteak. It, it's just normal meat. There's nothing special to it as such. But um, I think it's always good to eat seafood when you can. Belle is good. She was, uh, it was her birthday. Just now, we just celebrated it. Thanks, thanks man, thanks for the compliments. I can pass as a normie now. True, I'm uh, trying to blend in. Uh, Spurchard by Kyle, Happy New Year. Do you like this man made event? Yes, it's fun. Uh, I like the fireworks, that's about it. Also, hair looks good, looking young. Thanks, thanks, man. Uh, thanks for all the support over the last month. likely uh, I don't know uh, I don't really have any plans I uh, started growing it three months ago pretty much uh, 
I haven't thought about cutting it. You do any kind of exercise? Actually, uh, I wanted to make it my New Year's resolution to stop exercising completely for like one year and then make like a video health benefits of no exercise. No joke, but I don't know. Maybe. I, I, I kind of want, I want to do that. Uh, I know that most people, when they do a New Year's resolution, they do the opposite and try to work out more and do more sports, but it should be interesting to stop any kind of exercise for one year. Do I support Kanye now? Uh, what do you mean now? Did he say something new? Yeah, to improve beard growth, uh, it's genetics. I mean, pretty much all hair is genetics. Uh, beard, head, uh, chest, whatever, wherever the hair grows, you, you can almost not influence it at all. Thoughts on Andrew Tate's arrest? I don't know much about it. Uh, you would have to... Yeah, nah, I, I just don't care much about him. I think he was arrested because they said that he was trafficking women and like locking them in his house. That's all that I know. Yeah. I think I'm going to make a response uh, to Andrew Tate's videos just because people ask me about him all the time. I saw two videos which I thought would be pretty interesting to respond to where he talks about money and the Matrix because he's so incredibly stuck in the Matrix himself that it's really ironic what he says in those videos. I think that Tate is control. Uh, maybe he is control. Actually, maybe he is control opposition. He's control opposition in the sense that what he says is good um, to brainwash most people. So it appeals to the slaves. He very much appeals to slaves. The slaves love him because he's a slave himself. Like he, he's one of the biggest losers on earth, and all the losers really like him because he promotes a loser slave lifestyle, stuck in the matrix. So it's it's perfect. Yeah. So I actually, I agree, he is controlled opposition. Uh, 
Uh, super chat by Siriaran. How to heal gut from eating bad quality raw liver? You wouldn't mess up your gut by eating bad liver, except if it, if it was insanely toxic, which you would already see from the outside if it was full of holes and black spots and also smell terribly. Maybe then you could mess up your gut because you would partly destroy your gut microbiome, but otherwise I don't know what you mean. Because if you once or twice eat bad liver, you recover it within hours. There's nothing to heal from. I uh, don't really know what you're talking about. Mm. You disagree with everyone. I don't disagree with everyone. That's not true. And there's a lot of people that I like. Yeah. Um, Ajuna's Wonder Planets, for example. I, I don't disagree with him about... I disagree with him about stuff, but... Uh, for the most part, uh, I learned a lot from him. Derek Nance... Uh, I don't agree with the drugs, but everything else... Uh, spot on about uh, diet Natasha Campbell Sally Fallon says really good stuff about what our ancestors used to eat and what we should be eating oh, there's lots of people I agree with Ray uh, um, what's his name Ray Ray Pete also said super good stuff Sean Baker, I, I like that he promotes meat, uh, that's about it. Yeah, Caliber said, I don't disagree with everyone, just the people who are wrong. That just happens to be a lot of people. Yeah, exactly. Most people on Earth are wrong about stuff. Uh, nothing surprising about it. You made me want to quit my job and you said sleep when you can overwork. Okay. It is just not a possibility for most people. You can't uh, sleep all day. Andres Casti, never heard of him. Crazy fruit eater almost died. No, I don't know. <laughs> Can a woman with a high body count still become a good housewife if she's willing to change? I don't know what you mean by good housewife. What, what is a good housewife? You will have to define that. Super chat by Aaron. What's your thought on genital herpes? Um, herpes are um, could be two things. Could be simply yeast. Usually, it's just 
like a yeast infection. Uh, yeast, unlike other stuff, which I don't want to mention, such as unicorn, for example, can actually be transmitted from one human being to another. So if you are intimate with somebody who has genital herpes, it is possible for you to also get it because yeast can be transmitted from body to body, unlike other stuff, such as unicorn and similar stuff. Uh, so if, obviously you should be careful if somebody has, uh, um, well, any kind of herpes really, um, not any, no, not, not all of them are transmittable. And then there's the ones where the nerves are simply damaged. There's just the nerve endings which are damaged, which is also misdiagnosed as herpes a lot of times. But I think genital herpes are pretty easy to recognize. Uh, and you would know right away if somebody had that. Uh... Anyway, yeah, so there are ways to get rid of it. Uh, Actually, I know somebody who got it from a woman who slept with somebody just randomly one night stand and got really terrible genital herpes, like really bad, where uh, I don't even want to say what happened. I actually healed it for him. I did a consultation and got it healed, which I'm pretty proud of. He even was really thankful afterwards that I helped him. So yeah, I know how to get rid of it. Uh, but it's, it's not that simple. Um, but yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, thanks for all the work, Prussian. I, I don't even, uh, I don't even get, uh, Good to do it myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, very nice. Yeah, good coincidence. Danke. Still vegan? Uh, yes, I'm still vegan, of course. Vegan for life. The... I got a vegan for life tattoo behind my ear, so I could never quit veganism. It would be embarrassing, or I would have to get the t tattoo removed. Um, I gotta wash my hands, one second.
Whoops. Uh, yeah, it's, I think I'm reaching like the. I've always had lots of jealous people, but I'm reaching like the maximum of jealousy in this live stream. But it, it's funny. <laughs> I I love jealous people. Uh, super chat by Smurd. What are your thoughts on smoked meat? Does putting meat over smoke destroy nutrients? Um, good question. Um, the biggest problem with smoked meat is that uh, literally the smoke enters the meat and you actually eat uh, carcinogens when you eat smoked meat. It's not a really super big deal, except if you would be eating it kind of every day, like some people do bread, butter and smoked meat, uh, proce or processed meat, smoked meat, all that stuff. If you would eat it a few times a month, a month, you would probably never notice uh, any difference to your health. And uh, it's closer to raw food than uh, eating any kind of uh, boiled, grilled or whatever kind of uh, garbage meat. Uh, it's putting meat over small destroy nutrients. Yeah, it destroys nutrients because it heats it up, uh, just not as much. Uh, I think there's like a 39 degrees Celsius limit usually, which they try to do and 39 degrees isn't really going to destroy most of the nutrients. So you're still going to have the, even like the water soluble vitamins, the B vitamins. So, so. Yeah, smoked meat is better than cooked meat for sure. Why do I shave? It's uh, to fit into society. Um, why, why do you do anything? Uh, I mean, why do I sit at the computer? It's also not natural, right? Why do I drive? Uh, why do I use uh, a plane to travel? Uh, you could say anything. But um, for example, when I had a really big beard and I traveled to a country, they were asking me weird questions like, why, why, why do you come here? What are you going to do here? And all this stuff. Whereas uh, if, if you're like somewhat shaved, because it's normal in society, I think I also think it's stupid, but it's normal. And you look kind of, what, how do you say, groomed or whatever, then um, yeah, just right away there. Airport security treats you differently. So yeah, there is a there is a point to it. Uh, if I lived uh, in nature, of course I wouldn't shave. Why would you? Wouldn't make any sense. Uh, how would you even? Uh... I also really appreciate the, the rainbow flags by Blood is Life. Uh, 
I uh, appreciate that people understand what my channel and what every channel is supposed to be about, and that is celebrating and accepting equality and that all humans are equal and that we should all have the same rights, no matter how you look like, what your orientation is, what your pronouns are, where you're from. Thank you guys uh, for supporting uh, LGBTQ and just freedom and happiness for everybody. That's what true love is, realizing that we are all equal. Thank you. Do I miss Eliero? Eliero? I sometimes think about it. Uh, yes, it's orange juice, so uh, I never stopped drinking it, not, not that I should. Uh, yes, I'm on Rumble. Mm -hmm. New German medicine? I don't agree with it so much. Um, there's a little bit of, Yeah, it's a complicated topic. There's a few points that I agree with, but for the most part, I don't... Uh, What do you think about the new YouTube video from German Carnival? Haven't seen it. Right. It's why we see so many shares of yours. Did you see can be coming on me late? Oh, then I actually I saw it, I think, on Telegram or something, uh, the picture, but I just, the thumbnail, but I never clicked on it. I, for, I just simply forgot, uh, I should watch it. Um, yeah, definitely. Oh, his hair is pretty long. He looks good, man. Uh, he looks very young. Uh, he, yeah, he looks a lot younger than um, he actually is. Uh, Super Chubba Kyle, do you get tumors from consuming carcinogenic things? Uh, good question. Uh, because you said tumor is a cholesterol deficiency. So I said tumor is a cholesterol deficiency. More so because uh, when you've got all the dead cells and you can't get rid of them, yeah, technically it, it's indirectly a cholesterol deficiency because uh, the cholesterol and the uh, testosterone, for example, a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people see testosterone only for a few things, but testosterone actually is um, something that is used for detoxification and to clean the body. It's not only an SCX hormone, as most people believe. So it's actually an, an antioxidant, testosterone. Interesting thing, yeah. And it, that is actually also used uh, for preventing tumors in the body, like to get rid of the dead cells, which then form into clumps, 
which then form into tumors. That's what a tumor is. Um, anyway, to answer your question, um, do you get tumors from consuming carcinogenic things? Carcinogens, uh, so carcinogens, yes, you do. Carcinogens are uh, like, <laughs> really they should be called like tumorogens because, uh, well, if you watch my video on cancer, you understand what I mean. But yeah, essentially they are just uh, toxins, toxic byproducts from food and whatnot. Uh, and, you know, a lot of um, generally toxins, like even from uh, washing powder nowadays, those are called carcinogens. Just because even modern science, medicine has to recognize that uh, they kill your cells, that they're toxic to your human body. <sighs> Yeah. So, yeah. So yes. Uh, and then you said this is too much. Also, thoughts on uh, Terry Fox. He ran for cancer research. He ran until he died. I don't know him. I I can look up who this guy is. Terry Fox ran for cancer. Terry Fox Foundation. Let's fight cancer together. Terry Fox, Marathon of Hope, uh, died in 81, Canadian athlete, because huh? you're Canadian too, I guess that's why you know him. Uh, maybe people outside of Canada don't know him so much. Uh, with one leg having been amputated uh, due to cancer, he embarked on an east to west coast Canada to run to raise money, awareness for cancer research, uh, spread of cancer, eventually forced him to end his quest after 143 days well after 143 days most people would die after they run so whether he had cancer or not uh, that's probably what completely destroyed his body in the end and then the uh, well what did he have what kind of cancer even Okay, it's a complicated topic. It's gonna to take me too long to read it all. Oh, he had bone cancer. A cancerous tumor in the bone, which is why his leg was removed, I guess. But wait, man, was was he running before he got the tumor? Isn't that what caused the tumor in the leg? And then he ran even more? to promote cancer research? Is that what actually happened? That's pretty... <laughs> yeah. He had leg cancer, lost his leg, then it spread to his lungs, I think. Hmm. Sounds suspicious. Somebody asks, is five foot nine short uh, for a guy? It's, it's, I think it's average height now. What's the average height? Average height for a man. Um, 1.7 meters. I think that is like five, five nine pretty much. Uh, your average. Wait, no, 1.7 is, 5.9 is way more. It's like 176 or, you're actually above average. Yeah, so it really depends on uh, where you're from. Yeah. In Asia, you would actually be seen as tall. In uh, like Northern Europe, you would be seen as average. Maybe by some people 
shorter than average, but not really. Yeah, 171 is global average for men. That's interesting. I think it's because of the Asians and Indians that bring the statistics down. Because in Europe, the average is way higher. 180 in Sweden. Yeah. East Africa, a lot of people are very tall and thin. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, South Sudan. People bring the height average down in most countries. If you're five nine in northern country, maybe say average. Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. You have to use TikTok to increase your publicity. I don't know, man. I wouldn't know what to post on TikTok. I would, but I really wouldn't know what. So. If you can give me some suggestions, then uh, sure. I'm just really not into those trendy social media websites. I could respond to people. I think TikTok is also very, uh, like they censor people too easily. That's another problem. TikTok bans or the based accounts. What is the most trending song? Overlaid and do eating one year old wheel brain, that would be a trip. I think it would also get banned eventually. I know that there's some people who eat raw meat on TikTok, but uh, maybe very fresh uh, raw meat, like some Asians do those mukbangs or something like that. Uh, I think that's about the only thing that would be allowed on there. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Dangerous behavior, yeah, stuff like that. The only raw meat you would get away with is if you eat sashimi. Right, I could technically eat uh, stuff like shark. I could say like eating sar shark uh, sashimi or uh, beef sashimi, stuff like that. That's about it.
No, I never tried Ostrich Egg. I wish. Oh, Super by Primal Spirit. After years of emotional stress in school and family, I got sick. Uh, took two courses of uh, antibiotics. Huh. How long would you estimate detox will last? I'm 19. Why did you take antibiotics because of stress in school and, f and with family? That's interesting. Uh, I've never heard of that before. I would understand if you took antidepressants, but who prescribed antibiotics for you? Or did you have this idea yourself? Anyway, maybe you don't want to say. Whatever the reason. Is that antibiotics are not something you detox from. Uh, um, the reason you feel bad after taking antibiotics... Well, okay, firstly, the reason you feel good. Some people, if they have some uh, inflammation, is because antibiotics are anti-inflammatory. Which is, which is helpful uh, to reduce the symptom of inflammation, but uh, at the same time, they also, it's just a toxin, essentially. It's a po poison, it destroys everything that it touches, and it travels to your gut, if it's a pill that you take, which you probably took, and then, um, yeah, it enters your intestines and destroys your gut microbiome, and once that's destroyed, it cannot produce the same kind of hormones and other chemicals which make you feel good which is why it causes depression and all kinds of mental issues and that's um, what you probably got so it's something you can detox from your problem after taking antibiotics are not that you have toxins in your body and now you got to detox from them the damage is already done now you don't have to focus on detoxing but you have to focus on healing from the damage that's done which really you can only do by eating uh, um, intestines, uh, fermented animal foods, uh, that's about it. There's nothing else that's going to help. Super chip by Lamb Chop. Lovely crumpets and coffee mites. Thank you. Oh, it's nine euro. I'm going to buy like, uh, like 20 crumpets and uh, two coffees in it. You know, after I wake up. Uh, it's because uh, the weather is so grey and hull right now that a coffee in the morning is lovely, makes me feel so good, in it. Maybe the weather is better in London. Gotta go for a day trip there, in it. Your British accent got worse. Yeah, I know. I feel it too. It's because uh, I haven't done it in so long. Yeah, I haven't had fish and chips. I think that's the biggest problem that brings out the bridge. English comes from uh, old German, old uh, German uh, kind of Dutch uh, language, and then it just uh, transformed into English, what we know as English. English really used to be a Germanic language.
Daniel said I look like a beautiful oyster, not like a vampire. I look like a tech CEO. That's that's more like it. Yeah, yeah, I saw the video about the guy going to the Netherlands uh, to buy the old uh, to buy the milk cow. Yeah. Like a professional oyster tester. That's that would be a cool job. You look like a Latvian. That can't really be true. My friend said you look like a primary school teacher, whatever that means, bro. I'll take it. Are you in Bulgaria? Not right now. No, not in Bulgaria. I... I was... After Georgia, I went to Chechnya, the, the Chechnyans, like the Muslims in Russia. I met a lot of cool people there. Created a lot of new contacts. Yeah, I keep in touch with them on Telegram still. I created a group for them. Oh, you are Chechen. Nice. Uh, they don't eat raw meat, but they do eat a lot of meat. Uh, most Muslims eat a lot of meat, even though it's very overcooked, but it's better than um, the way Europe is going. Yeah, maybe it's just, it's just, it's just something to do with the religion, I think. Uh, that it's not supposed to be raw and bloody. Yes, I know about Köfte. I like the hair and you look like French, kind of. Oui, je... Je... Soin... Que te point. Je toi que lust la mer. Shalom, uh, salam alaikum. Do you like my dying bride? I only listen to Islamic music nowadays without any instruments because uh, instruments and technology and electricity was created by the devil. Um, I listen to only the voices of uh, my Islamic brothers. Um, Inshallah. Mashallah.
Hm, okay. When you speak French, became plus five percent gay. Harvard say. Yes, my next commentary will be on Andrew Tate, and then I'm gonna make another one on uh, Liver King, I think, because a lot of people wanted me to make another video about him. Um, I'm gonna make a commentary on this one guy who said that liver causes food poisoning. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Liver queen, drug queen. He needs to do more and energy banging if he pronounce a lot of toxic things like working out every day and coffee. He does? Does he say you should work out every day? That's interesting. Maybe I should, we'll see how the first video uh, comes along. He says a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't even know most of it. Uh, the thing is there's not so many good videos about him, uh, like on the stuff he says, but somewhere in my tabs, I have two which I want to respond to. I just gotta find them again. It shouldn't be a problem. He talks about hypnotism and dark magic. Ninety percent, he says, it is legit. I don't agree. I would say like three percent of what he says is legit. I mean, almost everything he says is wrong. Yeah. Tate said, "Worgen, uh, oops." <laughs> But uh, a cigar is razor to testosterone. Yeah, no, oh, there you go. So he eats a lot of meat. So I would agree that that's like in the 3% of what he says is correct. But then again, he only eats cooked meat. So it's like with Sean Baker, it's cool. And I like anybody who promotes eating meat. But when you don't differentiate between cooked and raw meat, I can't really fully agree with you because I can't really respect you because I know that you don't know what you're talking about, really. So it's cool that he understands that you gotta eat a lot of meat, but then again, he doesn't really understand much about it at the end of the day because he doesn't even differentiate between cooked and raw. He says raw onions raise the testosterone. <laughs> okay. Sean Baker is a normie. Yeah, Sean Baker is just a normal guy. He he's just a normal guy who also promotes eating a lot of meat. Yeah. Well, but he went to college, right, uh, got his medical degree and everything. When you go through so many years of brainwashing, you have to be a normie. You can't get out of the so-called matrix after you've been to college. You're so brainwashed at that point, it's almost impossible. Yeah, he sent over his left eye for four minutes in an interview saying it was an injury. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, who knows if he's even in prison now. Maybe he's just chilling somewhere.
Okay, that would be a big conspiracy, but I don't know nowadays. People who understand the agenda and go carnivore but still believe every other lie are so beyond help, I don't know how possible to not open your eyes. Yeah, but cooked carnivore isn't really going to do it. I don't think it really awakens you to the point where you start realizing that there's so many agendas out there. And Liver King didn't even need any exposing. You, you would have to be brain that to not see that he's on drugs. There, there was nothing to expose in the first place. I literally cannot believe there are people who believed him and he said he is natural. <laughs> yes. Dex Vegan interviews. Dex Vegan interviews are all on my website. All of my old videos are uploaded on there. He's just entertainment, makes money from it, that's all. Yeah, exactly, it's just, uh, it's just for fun. It was all a show. The party guy from Osama, he says, natural humans to eat that way. He says it's natural for humans to eat that way. So it's natural to eat something unnatural. That's just a new level of stupidity. Tate is also a red pillar who sells a course about how to attract women with game and money and how it's unimportant if you aren't good looking because you can just be scary. Scary? Huh. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely a red pillar. Red pillars are, of course, the real blue pillars. There's only two, black pill and blue pill. Red pill and blue pill are the same thing. It's 100% wrong, both of them. Believing that money is important is the same as believing that you can be a good guy and have a good character and the girl is going to like you and your looks don't matter. It's the same thing. Red pill is blue pill. What do I think about Weed Waffles face ratings? Mm, it's strange that he only does 8 out of 10. He says he doesn't explain why, he just says that's how it is. I don't really get that part, but um, uh, for the most part, I think he's, he's right. I think he himself rated himself 6 out of 10, or 7 out of 10. 
and then people were laughing because he looks more like like a five or something. Not that I like this rating of people, but for the sake of the conversation, let's let's just use these ratings. Jesse Matt Walsh trying out vegan products and trying not to vomit. <laughs> no, I didn't see it. That's funny. Um, yeah, after these videos, I want to definitely review a video of wheat waffles. There are some people, especially one guy who linked me three of his videos, which seem pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, I also watched this one guy. What, what, what was the video? I, I can link it. I think it's a pretty good video about black pill. Um, what was the guy's name from seven years ago? Which is like the most popular black pill video there is. Black pill. What's the guy's name? Like super ugly guy. No offense, he's cool, but he's ugly, you know, naturally, can't do anything about it, just genetically ugly. With the, with the weird hair also, the video in the car, some of you probably know it. Never give up, Eggwood, no. Eggman, that was his name, Eggman, yeah. Black Bill Eggman. Ah yeah, right, I see, yeah, exactly, Eggman. What was this channel? Uh, I watched Tales. I watched a lot of the uh, videos you guys recommended. And I, I like most of them. I, I like the black pill content. And the reason I like black pill content is simply because uh, when I discovered raw meat, yeah, because I only care about nature. I don't care about these stupid pill, pill words videos. It's, uh, but when I discovered raw meat, I was the only one on YouTube, and I still am really the only one who only promotes eating raw meat. I know that there's some people who promote cooked and raw meat, but I'm the only one who promotes only eating raw meat, only raw food, uh, not like raw vegan, but raw animal foods. And so that's like the black pill of food. But then I, there's the black pill of relationships and attraction, which again is just nature. Like there's the natural part of food and then there's a natural part of relationships between men and women and black pill is very close to like nature which is what i'm about so it's it's, it's that's why i like black pill videos because they talk about i don't even know if they realize that they're talking about nature i think so probably i, I guess they would call it like evolution or darwinism or something but you know, at the end of the day, it really is just all nature and something that's naturally determined, uh, your genetics, and you're almost never going to be able to do anything about it. And um, human beings judge health by genetics, for example. And, like, there's, like, stuff about our genes we can't change, essentially. Um, well, you know, like, a lot of people end up doing, like, jaw surgeries or, like, cheek cheekbones, stuff like that, uh, if you don't have, like, high cheekbones. Um, then, um, and it's understandable, and then, you know, women are going to like you a lot more, or, uh, you know, women do a lot of plastic surgery and stuff. Um, but if you're not born with it, uh, usually there's almost no way to change it. But I like this, uh, like the black pill is really straightforward and uh, puts it like it is. Uh, yeah, so it's just, it's very hard to find... Uh, anybody who promotes anything natural and black pill is just something something that's yeah like an actual small community of people that promote nature
I can't find the Eggman video, but um, basically he was saying a lot of truth in that video. One of the things he said, ah, I wish I could find it, because it was really good. One of the things he said is that um, it doesn't matter if you're homeless, like it's like you can be a rich guy, you can be a billionaire, and a woman is still going to choose a homeless guy as long as he has even a little bit better genetics. And this is true, and you don't hear this kind of harsh truth anywhere anymore. And that, that's why I like the black pill stuff. Only thing is, those people tend to re resent nature and women. True, I did realize, I thought, I actually thought at first that the black, like the people who make black pill videos on YouTube, that they are good looking themselves. And then I realized that the black pill people rate themselves like four or five out of 10. Turns out that they're, they're like, they don't actually get along with women and women don't like them. And uh, some of them are like virgins in their twenties. And that's why they make those black pill videos because they're really sad about all the good looking guys. I thought that it's actually the good looking guys making videos about like the, the black pill content. That, that was interesting to find out. Most, I think most of the big uh, black pill channels are actually not so good looking guys who, uh, who are just, just sad about how, how, nature dominates i guess i guess you're right yeah they don't like nature ten k for adult circumcision <laughs> that's weird who actually does that only religious people right Hair system. <laughs> They're funny. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. Vegan gains had adult circumcision? Are you serious now, right? How can men find wife in today's dating app society? Go uh, become religious, uh, become like a hardcore Christian and go to churches. Get to know the fathers of the daughters and uh, ask for her hand. I think that's the only way nowadays is through religion, really. Hey, that's a good answer. Yeah, man, uh, you know, I've thought about this stuff. I didn't just make it up now. Sorry, it's my daily praising of our Lord. I used to hear that five times a day. Well, yes. 
You do pray five times a day. Uh, yes, I do. I make an exception when I live stream, but I I always do otherwise. Uzbekistan, pretty far off, actually. UK. Japan, <laughs> Berlin, <laughs> totally. Where do you live these days? Mm. Uh, I've mostly only been in Muslim countries, so... Yeah... You are lying, right, okay. I know it's Africa, mate. Damn. Is it a secret where you live? Um, not really. Well, yeah. I could call a six by female on Discord black hole server, even though I don't get any female attention IRL either. You need to be sent lost or she was lying about me being six. Whatever, it's um it's um well look, it depends. Because, uh, like, if a guy rates you, he's, like, a guy is not attracted to you, right? So a guy is just literally going to look at your face and rate certain things, like how your bone structure is and so on, and eyes, hair, whatever. Whereas a girl, she could just have a type. So a girl, girl, women are going to rate guys, like, it's going to, um, how do you say, fluctuate or whatever? It's going to be, it's going to dif differentiate, I don't know, it's going to be different. Yeah, whereas a guy is probably going to look at you and most guys are going to rate you the same. A girl can rate you like... It could be off two, three points depending on the girl and her type. Purchased by Mr. Eco. What should a woman do slash eat or not to give birth as easy and natural as possible? How can she stay healthy and not age dramatically? Thanks, mate. All right, no problem. Good question. Uh, so what she should be eating? Uh, well, men and women essentially should eat the same. There's really only a few differences. Like instead of eating testicles, a woman should be eating ovaries, for example, obviously because of the estrogen, progesterone, and so on. Just because, obviously, hormonally, they're different. But overall, when it comes to meat, fat consumption, and uh, liver, uh, liver, spleen, brain, it's all just as important for women. Maybe eating a lot of fat, animal fat, for women is even more important than for men. But really, it's really about the same. And to be fertile, and like you said, to give birth as easily as possible. Um, mm, oh, 
very interesting uh, point that I want to mention. Just uh, yesterday, um, I found out about this um, thing. So if a woman has a C, uh, what do you call it, C-section, I guess, um, yeah, and um, then uh, the name, like her, let's say, yeah, her daughter would also have a C-section, actually, this can be actually genetically inherited, and then the next generation would, ha would have trouble giving birth because of the two C-sections before. So nowadays women already have C-sections quite a lot, so it's probably, we are, we are already in this phase where women really have a trouble giving natural birth because of the previous generations. Uh, so it could be that genetically already many women nowadays are going to have problems because they give birth in hospitals. And of course you shouldn't do that. Uh, you should be giving birth at home, as, as we always used to do, with, with some help there, of course, if there is a complication. But uh, most likely you're going to know and feel if you're ready to do it. Um, of course, you should have a midwife who really is pro home births and knows what to do if you tear down there uh, to, uh, what do you, how do you say, to, uh, to sue, I guess to sue it together. Uh, I don't think suing is the right word for human body. Totally forgot it. Uh, like to, yeah. Anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, uh, natural as possible, to give birth as natural as possible, yeah, so, um, I mean, like, I, like I've said, uh, like I've said in my videos, uh, at, the, at the end of the day, the way you're going to give birth the easiest is, uh, is the, if the ossification of the bones hasn't started. Ossification is really just a fancy way to say that the bones haven't started to harden which uh, you know, is that every, uh, the way is that, oh, that whole area for women. Um, yeah. Not gonna say when that happens, but you should look it up yourself. The ossification charts for women, there's charts out there, statistics that you can look up and you can see at what age it happens. After the ossification, giving birth is gonna be hard no matter how much liver, brain or whatever you eat because you're giving birth at an unnatural age at that point and you can't change it anymore. Um, how can she stay healthy and not age dramatically? Thanks, mate. Um, I guess I kind of answered that already to stay healthy and aging dramatically. Aging is going to be caused by uh, lack of raw fat, uh, lack of sunlight. Uh, yes, sunlight is important and actually uh, is anti-aging, contrary to what a lot of people believe. And then just... Uh, Besides diet, she should have very little stress in life. Uh, women should not uh, study or work, ideally. Uh, we used to, women used to get married and have children and live a stress-free life, and they loved it. Uh, if you go to school, you're gonna be stressed, and if you're gonna start work and have a career, you're gonna be even more stressed. And if you then decide to have a child at like 30 years old, uh, it's probably gonna be sick, or you're gonna be sick, or you're gonna have a miscarriage or, the, uh, you're, yeah, there's going to be many, many complications if you go this unnatural route. Um, yeah. Uh, ideally, save your virginity and save yourself for the right guy and simply have a family with him and only be together with one guy in your life. That's, that's the best thing you can do as a woman. Everything else is, uh, is going to go completely wrong and your life is going to be destroyed. Uh, Lotus birth, um, sure, it's, it's also fine, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, also very important, yeah, but people said uh, you don't tear, tear if you squat. Is that true? You actually do? I, um, I know this, uh, I definitely know this, but... Uh, it's better and it's way less likely that you're going to tear. Yes, that's true. So 
Super chat by Mr. Rico. Thoughts on placenta? Should it be eaten? Uh, yeah, I guess a lot of animals eat it, and it used to be normal for women to eat it. Uh, that way, they wouldn't experience uh, depression afterwards. Uh, what's it called? Postpartum de depression, I think so. Yeah, they used to even be recommended to eat uh, placenta. And that's depression is al almost always caused by nutrient deficiencies. So when you lose a lot of nutrients after the birth, because you lose a lot of blood, a woman can become really depressed and eating the placenta full of blood, B12, and all the nutrients that she's going to be missing is going to help tremendously. For me, folate, B12 and B12 completely wiped my gloomy mood in particular. Hmm. Right, yes. Yeah, it's a big one. Uh, simply because uh, water soluble vitamins are so easily destroyed that so many people lack them and uh, they're not easily stored, also, they usually need to be replenished uh, almost daily. Uh, daily is okay, uh, daily is over the top, but every few days. Uh, Courtney Kardashian is her placenta. I think I heard about that. Are you serious? Weight training will age you quickly. I don't know if you're referring to me, but uh, yes, of course. Is there any way I can get still get your music packs? Uh, yes, they are all on my blog. Yeah. What country, in your opinion, has the best, most natural cuisine? Um. Yeah, I would say the United Kingdom, uh, especially England, uh, usually in the morning I used to eat bread with beans and ketchup. And uh, a lot of people don't, don't understand that beans and seeds in general are what humans always used to eat in nature, because they used to grow on trees and just fall down. And when grains used to fall down and ferment after a month it turned into bread and bread has every nutrient so you could you could take the bread after one month of fermenting the grains naturally like when they fell from the tree and then the ketchup obviously is naturally made from tomatoes and uh, beans also grow everywhere in nature and they're very you can easily eat them just like that without cooking or anything because it's our natural diet so yeah i really like england a lot and i miss it and i cry every day just thinking about it oh it's so loud lie i can't i just can't live without it in it <laughs> Bean, beans have more protein per pound than meat also very true beans generally have every nutrient higher than any meat product beans have uh, like 10 times more vitamin a than liver and they're very high in carbohydrates and fiber also don't forget fiber like how do all these carnists dead flesh eaters go to the toilet they can't because you need fiber to do it Fiber is the most important nutrient there is. Like people don't understand what an important nutrient it is. It's more important than B12 or anything. Without fiber, there's no life, essentially. Fiber basically is life. Like we die without eating fiber. 
I, I think I even heard some stories of people who didn't eat fiber for a week and they had to be hospitalized and some of them even died. Like fiber deficiency is a real thing. Mettbrötchen is good without the met, uh, only the bread. The bread with salt and pepper is very tasty and nutritious. And fiber grows muscles, yeah, that's, that's been proven already by a very clever individual. I'm not being sarcastic. Uh, I'm never sarcastic. I Honestly, like I'm not even joking. Sarcasm uh, is alien to me. It's uh, I can't comprehend it. It's uh, I don't even know what it is. In it, it's just it's bloody awful. The fuck you talking about? I just can't. Sarcasm is a symptom of fiber deficiency. That's perfectly said. I have to agree with that. So we need to eat more fiber like kale and broccoli. Kale and broccoli are good. Uh, broccoli has anti-cancer fighting chemicals. Kale is the most nutritious food on earth. There's no food that has as many nutrients as kale. Also, yeah, like you said, very good source of fiber. Um, Phytates. Just everything. Everything a human body needs, really. And uh, you can juice it, ferment it, make it into soup. Kale soup is really yummy. I, I make it like almost daily. And it takes a lot of time, but it's still worth it because it's so nutritious and healthy for you. You can microwave it. You can make it into kale chips. You can make pudding out of it, like uh, you just make like a puree out of kale, super yummy, mixed with oats. Oats have a lot of fiber also, kale with oats, really good fiber source. How often do you stream on YouTube? I stream every Sunday, 6 p.m. European time, more or less, sometimes. Like today I was a bit late, but pretty much. Wait, Goldus isn't carnivore anymore? Well, I never was. Uh, I tried eating meat for some years, but I realized that it's just not natural for humans to do that. I uh, read a lot of books by my, Dr. Michael Greger, really recommended nutritionfacts.org. And it's really the website is full of facts. It's not only like his beliefs based on nothing at all. No, no, it's really factual information where I just learned everything I need to know about food, health, and nutrition, man. Like a proper, really cool American guy, Dr. Michael Greger, man, really I recommend checking him out. You know, like, come on. I'm not trolling at all. But what are you talking about? I not ever troll, mate. Wait, so go, go to see vegetables and cereals now? Yes, I do. It's my favorite.
Uh, how get I get your telegram on iPhone? Email me. It's simple. I can explain everything. If anybody has problems joining my telegram, just email me. Gregor does look healthy though, no joke. Uh, if I'm ever 165 years old, I want to look like Dr. Gregor also. Isn't he like 165? I'm not really sure. Something like that for sure. Why is everyone act, uh, acting shocked in the chat? Plants, especially leafy greens, are the healthiest food you can eat. Yeah, exactly. I also don't understand it. Uh, and it's a fact, it's a nutritional fact that leafy greens have the highest amount of fiber, really most nutrients. Uh, leafy greens are the most nutritious food on earth. Yeah, of course. Uh, it's basically perfect for every animal almost uh, every animal should be eating some uh, dark leafy greens and they're very delicious also the way you can know that they are perfect for humans is uh, because they taste delicious we we can know it by taste uh, who who wouldn't want to eat steamed uh, spinach kale and broccoli like mushed up Imagine it right now. Spinach, kale, broccoli mushed up, like steamed and mushed up into a pulp, and then eating it with a spoon, like all of the three most healthy vegetables on earth. Every human being on earth salivates when they imagine eating that because it's part of our natural diet. It's super healthy for us. I think that proves everything. Uh, super chat by Hassan. My God, did you grow your hairs with raw meat? Well, raw meat is protein for the most part, so I guess you could say that. <laughs> Super chat by Henry, really liking the flag in your name, uh, really big thumbs up. Happy 2023, got this, nice hair, looking good. Do you want to walk the Pride Parade with me this summer? Really looking forward to the Pride Parade. I'm really glad you mentioned it. Yeah, I'm thinking of doing a tour through a few countries for the Pride Parade because, uh, you know, I've had a lot of friends of mine, uh, really close friends who are part of the LGBTQ community and uh, they get harassed a lot and uh, I don't know, people just don't like them for some reason. There's like a lot of discrimination which I really don't like. So yeah, I have really full support for the Pride Parade uh, this year. Um, I don't know, maybe thinking of going to Los Angeles uh, for it. There's a lot of good people there, uh, big community there or uh, really any any state in the US would be good except for like Utah or something and uh, yeah Germany Germany has really big uh, pride parades Belgium uh, Russia of course Russia of course doesn't have a, a pride parade they don't even allow it and that's exactly why I'm so anti-Russian and 
Slava Ukraina, blyadye. For real. I really don't like Russia because of all of that. What was that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Putin is a really evil man. Uh, I really don't like him. It's not so... You would think that I don't like him because he invaded Ukraine, but no, no, no. I don't like him because of his... Like, he doesn't allow the pride parades in Russia, like in Moscow, in the capital. Um, that's the main reason I don't like Russians and Putin. Uh, the, the Ukraine thing isn't even as important, because uh, the way I see it, people have... Uh, there's like a war against equality and uh, respect for other human beings. And this is the war we really need to focus on and fight in the first place. A lot of people nowadays talk about Russia and Ukraine and all of that. No, no, no. Like there's, there's a more important war. It's the war against equality. And that's, that's what I'm fighting for in the first place. And that's what I support. Thank you for listening. It's, it's, it's a very important topic and it really goes deep in my heart. I almost have to cry because it's, it's really sad. <laughs> Thanks guys, thanks for the support, so heartwarming and inspiring, I don't even know what to do with myself now, thank you guys, I think it will get better for all of us. Somebody said, I can come out of the closet here. Absolutely, you can. This is an open space and uh, nobody will be judged in this chat. <coughs> is there equality in nature? Yes, exactly. And uh, that's why I promote it because it's the natural way to be. So sweet, you great actor. I don't know what you mean by actor. I'm really serious, actually. In Berlin is a big community. Uh, yes, uh, that's that's the main reason why I like Berlin and why I lived there for so long. Uh, the, um, there's a big uh, like LGBTQ community. Uh, I always used to go to the meetings and to the parades and everything. Uh, there's even a lot of YouTube videos where you can see me like walking. Uh, I, I, I had my own self-made uh, rainbow flags and like i even had like a rainbow costume which uh, and i painted my face in rainbow colors there's a lot of footage of me online in from berlin West Hollywood, that's true. Uh, I've been there. Berlin is more Germany than the rest of Germany these days. I agree, I agree. Berlin was always the true Germany. Berlin is Germany, exactly. Uh, I agree, yeah.
LGBTQ AI plus and inside it MAP minor touch people like gay. Uh, also don't discriminate against us. We that's a that's a topic that I don't want to touch. Touch. What do you think about Ted Kaczynski? Uh, uh, I liked the stuff that he wrote for the most part about uh, nature and everything. Lots of Moroccans in the chat, nice. Are there really? How many are there? Can I talk about water? Water is very important for health and uh, I try to drink a gallon a day usually to flush out all the toxins and to really hydrate my body and just for overall health, you know? Nobody in this chat cares about global warming. I care about global warming a lot, uh, actually. It's, uh, it's a lot on my mind and uh, I really try to do my best to stop it. Uh, new videos? Uh, yes, I will film new videos very soon. Isn't the meat you GMO? What kind of chemicals do you think they inject into it? So, Bishop Akal, such thing as good uh, mold. 
Good question. I actually can't really answer it. I know that a lot of mold that I've eaten certainly doesn't do anything bad to me as far as I know. But it is a type of yeast and it would probably promote the growth of yeast in your own body, most likely. Uh, I should have said that it does help in some special circumstances to get uh, toxins actually out of the body, but um, it's tricky. Like, what color should high mold, high meat mold be? Um, like, um, dark green, kind of. Uh, certainly not black and also not white. Yeah, that's abnormal. Then it's feeding on something strange and you know, a weird kind of mold is growing on it. Or is there even supposed to be mold? Well, is there even supposed to be mold? I think it is technically mold. Obviously, nobody has really um, tested it in a laboratory and tested what, uh, what what chemicals, what stuff is on high meat. It's very, uh, it's, a, it's a very un, uh, un uh, how do you say? Like, uh, um, what's the word? Un, uh, I don't know. It's not research. Let's just say the whole thing because it's, it's so anti-scientific. Raw meat in general, let alone high meat. Un, un unacknowledged. Might be. Kurva, yeah, don't talk to me. Don't talk nonsense, kurva. I don't need your Polish kurva nonsense, man. I use English more than Polish. I, s I can see that. You know a lot of words that I don't. Will this life be saved on your channel? Yes, of course. Every live stream is saved on the channel. Every official one, not if I live stream for like 20 minutes. Do Polish stream. Polish stream is going to be hard, man. I only know one word. Kurva stream. Kurva stream, blad. That's kind of how they talk. Zaproszki ni piszka skasznitka, kurwa. Yeah, that's a good impression on how we talk. I learned from the best. Gagasho <laughs> Vista Mangasho Pista Vista Tikai Pista Vista Riti Ispis Vista Any Russian-speaking people in this chat? 
Ну да, блядь, что ты не понимаешь, сука, блядь, гандом нахуй, дурак, блядь, сука, нахуй, блядь. Закрой рот, жопа, блядь. Давай, давай, пошел нахуй, блядь. Hundred twelve years old, three ounces of raw steak daily. Ah, that's another one, yeah, because the other one from Italy, she turned to hundred seventeen. She ate uh, raw eggs and also some raw meat. Hmm. Cool. I don't take finasteride or minoxidil, no. I don't because... Uh, just because of the potential problems caused uh, for... Uh, for your offspring, that's it. Uh, I've heard that uh, if you take finasteride and, your uh, and you have a boy, Maybe it doesn't affect girls so much, but if you have a boy, his genitals don't really um, develop. So he has just undeveloped genitals. Uh, could never risk that. Imagine having a boy. You're, you basically destroy his whole life because you took something for your hair. But uh, maybe like a topical form of it would be good. No, 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 no haven't looked into that, but... Side effects are rare. Yeah, but uh, that, that might as well be true. But uh, who, who nowadays has children, right? Uh, guys nowadays don't worry about that. They take it just to keep their hair. They don't worry about having children because most people are not having children anyway. So we don't really know what effects it actually has on your offspring. I know males who are infertile today for its use of an asteroid. Oh, man. Yeah, like, maybe a topical form which doesn't really affect your whole body and doesn't go into the bloodstream, really, maybe that's okay. But if you take it as a pill and you destroy it in your whole body, because, you know, it's a form of testosterone, obviously it has a natural function in the body. I'm gonna do the commentaries with a cap on, otherwise I'm gonna get bombarded with questions. At least the next next few ones, maybe until it settles down. Why does raw lamb liver taste awful? Because most lamb are injected a lot. Uh, they are very toxic. Uh, it does taste awful. It is very toxic liver, yeah. Usually people get food poisoning from lamb liver or from lamb meat in general. Do I believe if Jesus or Prophet Muhammad ever existed? 
do I believe it? Uh, I think B Buddha maybe existed. Buddha was just a guy. Uh, the other ones, maybe. Oh, what does it matter? Uh, I think probably not, but uh, I think Jesus didn't exist. But I, I think it's more likely that Prophet Muhammad existed than Jesus. Other than YouTube, do you work? Does uh, trading crypto count as work? Or what do you mean? Like 9 to 5 job? No, I don't have that. from lamb once it was the only time I ever get sick in his diet I was just vomiting for 20 minutes and that's all I once ate lamb heart and I felt bad from it uh, I know that I ate it with somebody together and they got really sick but I uh, I think well, there were two people who ate it and they got sick but I think I was just so used to it already at the time the raw meat that I just didn't get sick from it thankfully but I, I was already feeling nauseous, like I could be getting sick. Hmm, kind of craving more of the shark. The shark is nice. I gotta start eating more fish, maybe, actually. I like the whale liver. How the hell do you get whale liver? Where do you get that? How do you attract women if I'm not Anglo or six foot three? Anglo, you don't need to be six three. You also don't need to be six three. Is even too tall for some women. Although, yeah, maybe for most women, they would like a guy who's six three. Maybe I don't know. Six three is, I think like the like the limit where it's like is it getting too tall maybe or it's like for i think for a lot of women it's pretty perfect because it's like the tallest they would probably go for um, yeah a thing between six feet and six three you're pretty you're gonna be fine for over 90 percent of women the taller the better well there's it's definitely not the taller the better because there's a limit uh, somebody who's like i don't know what two meters is somebody who's over two meters most women are not going to be with um because it's too tall for them because it, it looks abnormal except if the woman itself herself is very tall obviously but that's rare most women are too short in comparison so they're not going to want to walk around with somebody who's two meters tall it's gonna look abnormal and people women don't want people don't want this kind of attention in society. Do I believe that Atlantis existed? Yes, uh, I've been to Atlantis actually. It was 1986, I believe. I traveled there with my friend, James Crossington, who was born in Wales, actually. We had a bloody nice time there. It was lovely. <laughs> Get cookie, cookie and tea. Listen. <laughs> it 
thing being very tall in nature is a massive disadvantage. In what sense? I think it would be hard for you to hide, that's about it. I think it would be for the most part faster than other people or animals. Well, I'm stronger, obviously. It would maybe be harder to hide behind a bush and uh, to surprise attack somebody. You're a bigger target for projectiles. Yeah. I mean, a lot of tribes wouldn't even have projectiles anyway. You gotta be clever enough to create them. Tall people are slower than shorter people as they weigh more. That's actually not true. Weight is relative to your body size. Like you're gonna be you're gonna be quicker if you're like two meters tall. Usually you're gonna run much quicker if you have longer legs and so on. You know, obviously, yeah. There's obviously like a good middle ground, somebody who's like 190, I think most of the fast runners from Africa, for example, I think they're like something between 180, 190, because they have tall legs, like long legs, but they're still able to, like they're not that incredibly tall, but they, uh, that I think somebody who's over two meters, you would think that they have very long legs and they would be able to run super quickly, but actually, that's already getting to the point where it's too long, uh, too tall for that kind of stuff. Maybe they have more back and knee pain. But yeah, certainly you don't see in the Olympics when people run like a short guy like 160 you know he's too short two 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 short legs isn't gonna work best football soccer players are short well cristiano ronaldo is considered to be a good football player whatever you may say about him i think he's like 190. Uh, messi is very <clears throat> messi is very short that's true but he's garbage <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, soccer doesn't have much to do with nature, yeah. They do have to run well. That's about it. There's certainly benefits in a man-made game where you have to uh, yeah, play a ball. Yeah, sometimes in some way being shorter could be good, yeah. But whatever, it's an unnatural way to measure something. Basketball is brutal for sure, guys. Oh, yeah, of course, because you have the man made target which is high. So that's why all the people are tall in basketball. Are you from Romania? Yes, uh, I was born in a Romanian castle. I don't remember how I was born, but I was always told 
it was a dark, dark castle, and my father's name was Vlad. Vlad the something I forgot. My real name is Alucard. Yeah, how did you know? My email address? Let me give you. I wrote my email if you wanted to send something. Are there any benefits to cooked animal food at all or should it all be eaten raw? Yeah, there's no benefits whatsoever to any cooked food, not only animal foods, but cooked food in general. Uh, cooking is simply applying heat to something. It should be clearly understood what cooking even is. And heat applied to anything living only destroys it. There's zero benefits to applying destructive heat to something that lives. It always only causes bad side effects. That's what cooking is. It's destroying your food. So for a thing. Hot cooked green tea is Asian secret to a long life. That's true, yeah. The more green tea we drink as humans, the longer we live. This was actually proven on um, nutritionfacts.org. Again, I don't want to promote him too much, but Dr. Michael Greger has proven this many times through many studies and very informational videos. Really a genius of our modern times. I look up to him a lot.
Was was I drinking orange juice? Should men be shaving their beard? If you want to. I think uh, beards look pretty good, usually. Um, if you take good care of it. Uh... Ciao, Kayet. How did your hair grow back? Well, um, I watched uh, Dr. Michael Greger's video, how to get your hair back. Uh, because if you, I don't know if you have ever seen him, look up Dr. Michael Greger on Google. Um, he has very great hair. So I've followed his protocol on how to look like him and uh, drank all the smoothies, the kale, chia seed pudding smoothies and dr drank a lot of kale juice and made a lot of kale soup and I was just starting to look more and more like him which was my goal in life really and yeah just uh, nutritionfacts.org that's all I can say if you have any health issues just check out the website and you will find an answer to every problem in your life not only health problems he really is a guru of my life in general and my philosophy in life. I learned basically everything from him. All of my videos are really based on his teachings. He's a spiritual guru, yeah, exactly. Thirteen cups of green tea a day. Thirteen, uh, whatever, thirteen, twenty. Um, it's arguable, but yeah, ten plus cups of green tea a day is definitely gonna uh, give a lot of health benefits. A lot. I can't. I can't even mention how many. It's just like it's a fucking many. It's bloody immeasurable. <laughs> Is that even a word? 16. Can you do my astrology for today? Well, I need to know if your Jupiter is in the blood cycle of uh, Venus right now, because if it's not, then you need to align your Sagittarius augmentation with the moon cycle which is pretty hard to do you need to get some astrology charts for that if you do that and you can give me your asphinx uh, crater number for the new cycle of the moon then i can definitely figure out your mood your age what you need to eat how many children you're going to have what color hair your wife is going to have there's a lot of stuff you can get from astrology charts so just uh, let me know super chat by lethal did the mongols diet contribute to their success y yes of course uh, 
You mean the success of uh, the war? The wars that they had? Absolutely. Sure. Uh, thanks for the compliment, Amber. <laughs> Private astrological reading. Well, walking must be good for you. Humans definitely walk in nature. That's one thing that's that would be very hard to argue against because think about it, if somebody is in a coma, for example, and they don't move, they have real trouble moving um, their uh, legs again and anything. Like there was this one guy, you can look it up, who held his arm up um, for for a while to the point where he can't put it down anymore. And it's just stiff he's had his arm up his whole life uh, so obviously you can't just like be still and do nothing you need blood flow you need your muscles to work in some way and walking is something that we would always have done and along with a lot of other stuff uh, a lot of people misunderstand it when i say that you should be living a sedentary lifestyle sedentary includes walking as far as i'm concerned sedentary lifestyle even includes hunting and stuff Sedentary really just means everything that's natural and everything that you would be doing in nature, that's a sedentary lifestyle, by my definition. It doesn't mean that you got to lay all day, because, like I said, then your legs eventually wouldn't work anymore. Is hopping or jumping? I don't think that humans would hop or jump. Uh, I don't think that our bones are made for that. Uh, if you really want to send me an email, then uh, my email is in my about page. Just go to, just go to my page, my channel, and go to about. There's my email. Um, what's 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 actually interesting about uh, this topic is that I've said this before already, but when I was in Italy in Rome, I went to this one gym, and it was full of people who are like like guys who are a meter sixty tall, maybe meter seventy, really short people, like midget kind of looking people. I've never seen it in my life, but Italian people are very short because of their grain-based diets, but it was still surprising. It's interesting because these people are really trying to compensate for how short they are, and that's why they go to the gym, because they want to like look big and muscular, but then think about people who are two meters tall. Do you ever see them go to the gym? Yes, there are exceptions. Uh, you do see very tall guys at the gym, but rarely. I, gotta, I really got to say I saw them once or twice a year in a gym. And that's because they know that they dominate you, they know that they are better than you, they're taller than you, they have better genes than you, and no matter how much you're going to go to the gym, they're always going to be superior to you. And uh, it doesn't matter how big, muscular, a uh, short guy is going to get, like a guy who's two meters tall, he's going to have way bigger bones, way bigger hands, way bigger legs than you. One punch and you're going to be, your face is going to be broken, no matter how much you work out. And that, that's the thing. All the short guys are always trying to compensate at the end of the day, or even the ones who are normal height. But the guys who are really tall, they never really bother going to the gym because they know that their bones are way bigger and stronger than yours. And they are, you know, it's also kind of like a black pill thing. Uh, you can just, you just got to look at who goes to the gym and what is the gym filled with. Yes, there's exceptions, but for the most part, this is the truth.
Is that where the myth of lifting stunts your growth come from? Because all the short dudes are in the gym. I, I don't know. I don't think most guys start working out in their growth phase anyway. When they're a teenager, they start later when they're trying to compensate. Um, well, I went to the gym on and off. I really don't like it. The only reason I started was because of my stupid cousin who talked me into it like 10 years ago. And I liked the way my body looked like. Uh, but again, that's, uh, I think at the end of the day, it's also a sign of compensation. If I was like two meters tall, would I have ever thought about going to the gym? I don't think so. And uh, yeah, I think it has a lot to do with that. I think that, like I do like the way a somewhat muscular body looks like, but then again, in nature, you would be kind of muscular because you would have a lot higher testosterone and you naturally kind of build muscle. So you would look kind of muscular, but yeah, you know, to a, like a normal, normal, natural degree. Um, not like some guy on steroids. I don't think that that looks normal or appealing anymore. I never strived for that kind of physique. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I am about average height, uh, but I, when I started working out, I was very skinny because my diet was so horrible. Uh, so I, I was on a very unnatural diet, so my body looked very unnatural, like too skinny, too abnormal. So it was another extreme. So it doesn't matter how tall you are, if, if, you're, if you're on a horrible grain-based diet, it wasn't grain-based, but it was still pretty bad. Like, you know, pasta with cheese, okay, pasta with cheese and stuff like that, that's what I used to eat. Uh, before raw meat, uh, that's that's gonna still degenerate you slowly but surely. The cheese was the good part about it. Uh, yeah. You had typical slave diet, bread plus dairy. Yeah, pretty sure. Yeah, I think I did buy bread actually. Yeah, I also bought bread. But I mostly ate like kind of animal based, like I ate a lot of eggs and dairy, I ate a lot of yogurt and stuff like that. I definitely ate a big amount of grains. And yeah, if you don't eat raw meat and so on, your physique is going to be weird looking. So that's why I started going to the gym 10 years ago or something like that. And I liked the way I looked like then. But uh, I mean, over the years, I just realized how toxic the gym workout culture is. This, like the people, as uh, uh, yeah. I really don't don't like it. I, I really want to try not working out for a long time <clears throat> and just see and just see like how my body looks like. I think if you eat raw meat, I think my, my biggest problem would be losing my chest because I really like to have somewhat of a chest. But again, it's like kind of brainwash. But at the same time, is it? That's like the thing. If you would be eating liver and proper animal organs, testicles, and drinking blood, I think you would have such high testosterone in nature that you would naturally, by doing the smallest things, <clears throat> build muscle to a point where you would probably look like somebody who does calisthenics, like body weight exercises, without really doing much, by just hunting sometimes and dragging some animals. So that's the thing. I think that's why most people are like they want to go to the gym and do stuff because they're really trying to compensate for how they're really supposed to look like, but they just don't and they really want to. I think it's more compensation for having smaller bones and being shorter, but it's also a compensation for that. You would get a so-called beach body look. I think, yeah, I think something like that is probably a natural, the way a natural man looks like, more or less. Yeah. 
is it healthier for your hair to shave it all off and regrow? Nah, that's that's nonsense. Uh, there's also the myth that hair grows quicker if you cut it. Cut it. Completely no difference at all. It doesn't affect it. <coughs> The only reason I would recommend shaving off your hair is if you had it dyed and that's why it damaged, then yes. Do you see yourself ever becoming Christian or is that completely impossible? It's completely impossible. I'm never going to be religious in my whole life. If you ever see me make a video that I'm religious, it's only because I'm trying to infiltrate something or there's a reason why I needed to do it, but I'm never going to believe it. Even if I say in a video that I do believe in it, there, there will be some agenda behind it. Ajnus looked really good in his 50s for a short guy. Uh, yes, uh, wait, how tall was Ajnus? I forgot. Some people said that he was a bit short, yeah. One seventy. One seventy isn't that short. Tom Cruise is one seventy. I mean, it's short compared to most men, but. In Asia, it would be normal, if not even a bit above average. Yeah, on the doctors, he was sure that's true. But then again, the guy he was standing next to was pretty tall. So maybe it looked just because of the, you know, if you compare them. Five feet seven. Five feet seven isn't that that crazy short. I, I would say a short guy's like five feet, five foot uh, four, maybe like three, four. That's like three. That's a short guy. I would say. Uh, Ashen has always looked quite good. Uh, yeah, anyway, th this whole thing that I was talking about before about genes is very interesting because um, it's like um, you can take somebody with very good genes, like let's say some girl who's very good. And she can talk like how good a vegan diet is. People are going to believe her because of her genes, you know? Like, they will ignore that she she's very pale and is looking anemic, for example, as long as her genes are good. So you, you can, like, use models to promote your food, and it's going to work because people, people are programmed to look for genes, and they find genes healthy. But, like, if somebody has bad genes but eats raw meat and drinks blood, they're going to have very good skin, for example, and stuff like that. But it's, like, it's not going to be appreciated as much as somebody who has just very good genes and they did nothing for it. Their ancestors ate a good diet and they may be eating total garbage. Um, so that's, that's kind of the thing uh, nowadays. Always. Well, it's always been like that. But nowadays you can use social media and you can promote anything with uh, models and genetically gifted people. Uh, also, the thing is that nowadays there's very few people, it's getting fewer and fewer, who have good genes just because uh, well, because of the diets of today. So it's going to be more and more of a rarity to have uh, like all these so-called Hollywood actors and um, 
stuff like that. Oh, hey, this reminds me, talking about Hollywood actors, I kind of wanted to make a video. What do you guys think about it? I'm not sure if it's worth it, but like I want to make a video, not like a response to video footage, but a response to photos. And I want to go through uh, um, like examples of couples, kind of more black pill related content. And because I was thinking about this, because there's, I do, I can't find anybody who is rich, has a good status, like the red pill believes, a good status, has a lot of money, is famous, is but is not good looking or ugly, which most people aren't. If you're famous, you're usually good looking, but there's a lot of even ugly, good, uh, famous people, and none of them have a good looking wife. None of them. And it, it same with the girls, they have a bad looking husband, but uh, when I when I think about it, like Leonardo DiCaprio, right? A famous and so on, all of his girlfriends are like models Be because he's good looking, not because he's famous, right? But then when, when you take somebody like Woody Harrelson, super ugly guy, but very famous, maybe not as famous as Leonardo Di DiCaprio, but very famous and very rich millionaire, very ugly wife. Why does he have an ugly wife if status and money would be in any way important, like the red pill people believe? So I kind of want to make this black pill video and go through all the couples and just prove that all the good looking people are together with good looking people and ugly people, no matter how rich and famous they are, still have an ugly wife. None of them can get a good looking wife. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know of any examples. I mean, like Bill Gates, he was the richest guy on earth. His, his wife is the ugliest thing I've seen in my life. You would think if money would matter, a billionaire would have a super good looking wife, but they, they can't because it just really doesn't appeal to women. They're just looking for good genes to reproduce with and not the, uh, they can't reproduce with money, which doesn't exist. Like it doesn't matter to them. They can't like care about it. So none of these ugly people are able to get good looking women. <laughs> Bill Gates' wife is super hot. Uh, blonde, uh, just tuning in. Happy you got this. Thank you. Uh, good. What about Jay Z? Jay Z. Uh, I think about Jay Z. Jay Z and Beyonce, according to a lot of celebrities, are in some kind of Masonic cult or whatever. They're definitely in some cult where they're not normal celebrities. I think that they're up to some Illuminati stuff. Uh, not to sound like some conspiracy theorists, but uh, there's been too many celebrities including Kanye West, who came out and said that they're definitely into some uh, blood ritual worship and whatnot. So I think that that's what connects them more so than anything. Because uh, you know, if two, when two, when, you, when you're like into this kind of stuff and you're together with somebody, and I mean, Jay-Z doesn't, well, let me see, I, I forgot how he looks like, I don't think, like, I, I, like I can understand why, because you, you, you mean Beyonce, because Beyonce is relatively good looking. I could, but but she also has a lot of makeup on and stuff, and uh, I don't think think that she looks that good. I, I would say that Beyonce and Jay Z pretty much fit together, really. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think that they're really far off. Yeah, yeah. That I don't think she's that good looking. Beyonce has surgery is done. She has breast implants. Your live stream is lagging. Uh, okay. Uh, if it keeps lagging, I'm gonna change to data. Uh, is it is it still lagging? Hey, okay, let me let me change to data. Okay. Oh wait. Oops. <coughs> I changed to data now. Is there a difference? I think that the router was probably missing. 
Is it normal now? Okay. Alright. All right. Anyway. So yeah. You can see my nose hairs. Oops. I need to cut them. <laughs> Bill Gates' wife has to be trained. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Anyway. So the video idea is good, I would just need to have a lot of examples of this. Would, would you have any examples of anybody who... Like, can you think of any examples of anybody who is bad looking but has a good looking wife? Like, especially if they're rich and famous. Because uh, cause I thought about it and I never... I, I never saw any examples. Wait, okay, somebody said Bezos. Let me see. Be Jeff Bezos. Ah, Jeff Bezos is like the, what was he, the Amazon guy? Okay, his wife. Oh, are you joking? <laughs> his wife is super ugly, man. <laughs> like really ugly. Are you joking, or was it for real? I know you must be joking. Super ugly. Three out of ten at most. Like, what are you talking about? Oh my God! Even Jeff Bezos can get an ugly. Uh, can get a beautiful wife. No, none of these ugly rich people can get a beautiful wife. It's just impossible. Tarantino wife. Tarantino's wife is... Hispanic, I guess. Okay, she doesn't look bad. Uh, she has a lot of makeup on. I can't really judge it. Uh, uh, she has bad cheeks. Yeah, she has bad cheeks. She has lip injections. Bad chin also. Ugly chin. Uh, good eyes, though. Good eyebrows. Uh, okay, that's probably fake. That's, that women use makeup a lot. Um, well, she looks way better than Jeff Bezos' wife, but she doesn't really look good, like... I think without makeup she looks ugly-ish. Aver average at most, yeah, she's average at, mo at the best. And that's like the thing, like, uh, Quentin Tarantino is ugly, yes, of course, um, there's not... It's just objectively, he's ugly genetically, nothing you can do about it. His wife is average. Yes, his wife looks better than him, I would say. Uh, I can't say without makeup, but let's just say she does, probably. Thing though is, yes, he's a super, super, like a super uh, famous, super rich millionaire or whatever uh, guy, uh, like Hollywood, like super famous, one of the most famous, top three most famous Hollywood directors. Yet, he could still only get the wife who's average. That still proves my point. I mean, if money and fame would matter and status, and he has the... Like, you can't get higher status than this. If, if the red pill was true, you couldn't. And he only can get an average wife. No, his wife should be looking like a supermodel, like super perfect genetics. But wh why not? Because no genetically gifted woman wanted to be with ugly Quentin Tarantino. Because <laughs> it didn't matter to them. Because these women would rather choose an ugly homeless, like a, a good-looking homeless guy, because of good genetics. 
it's like the black pill completely just yeah wrecks all, all of this uh, red pill nonsense Uh, somebody said David Lynch and uh, okay wait David Lynch David Lynch is mm, not bad looking right away I can tell you so whatever his wife looks like David Lynch uh, in his younger years well let me see David Lynch younger he he still, he still looks pretty good David Lynch is at worst case, he's average. I would say he's a bit above average looking. And his wife is uh, actually uglier than him. Wow, that's interesting. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, David Lynch looks better than his wife. Yeah. Also very famous uh, director. Could not get anybody looking better than himself. That's also that also proves my point again. Um, messy, messy, messy wife. Messy wife. I would say both look the same. I mean, Messi is, I would say, a bit above average looking. He, like some people said, he's a bit short, but his wife, when they look, when they're together in the picture, she's shorter than him, so they fit together in that sense. I would say they look the same. They look like an ident, like a, like a perfect couple. Like they look both, both look the same. Like they perfectly fit together, like, genetically and everything. Uh, Seth Green wife Seth Green's wife is taller than him oh that's interesting that's rare but that happens also I've seen that before Seth Green I would say is average looking a bit above average I mean he's an actor usually actors are a bit above average looking but he's short which is a big minus but you know if it works I mean some some women don't care about it most do um i would say the wife is average at best she has a lot of makeup on what is, is she like half asian i can't really tell i would say they fit together like he's a bit above average and she's like average or a bit above average it's hard to say with the makeup again it's really hard to judge women because of the makeup But it's interesting that he's short. That's that's a. Uh, but again, that's just uh, that's again like a genetic thing. That's we're not talking about uh, red pill status, money, and whatnot. Uh, but it's interesting that she chose somebody who's smaller than him. Uh, somebody said Trump. Uh, I mean, I know Trump, uh, Melinda Trump, right? I, I don't need to look up the pictures. I know how she looks like. Um, she looks, they look, they look like they completely fit together, right? Vegan Gaines wife. <laughs> yeah. do, do I need to say anything about that? Anyway, so yeah, interesting topic, this whole thing. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Um, they, they, I even uh, found cases of women who work, who have a lot of money who are together with people who are broke. And there was this report of somebody who fell in love and married a homeless guy just because she really liked the way his eyes looked like. So yeah, man, uh, I mean, every, everything to me is proving that money and uh, 
Yeah, money and status is completely irrelevant to women. They just really go for good genes, even if the guy's homeless. The thing though is that somebody who's good looking can almost never end up being homeless because they're valued in society. So that's why it almost never happens. That's why, you know, you would easily find examples of this, but it doesn't happen. So you don't have really any examples of this. Uh, women are rarely homeless, yeah, because women are uh, um, very privileged in the society. Adriana Lima's husband. Okay, let me see. So that's an oyster in my mouth. Um, okay, she, ah, she was this, um, she was this model. I know her. So she's very good looking. Uh, again, genetically, you know. I I don't like uh, people from her region, but yeah, you can of course say naturally, objectively, she's genetically gifted and good looking. Sure. Uh, her husband uh, looks good on the first pictures. Also kind of model looking. Except he has weird eyes, I would say. But yeah, I would say he's... He looks like a model, yeah. So why was I supposed to look that up? It's just like a model together with a model. Again, genetically makes perfect sense. Yeah, just the eyes. Just the eyes are a bit strange. But maybe she likes them for whatever reason. Well, there's a lot, uh, I, don't, I don't know about that, like it depends on the pictures you look at. He looks like Nicolas Cage in some pictures. She's probably just attracted to those eyes for whatever reason, obviously. I think I see a picture where she's pregnant, so obviously she wanted, she saw his genes as superior to other males and wanted to reproduce with him, so she found those eyes really attractive and wanted her offspring to have possibly those kind of eyes, which are uh, a lot together. Um, like close together. He's also tall with a huge frame. Uh, yes, that is true.
what are the signs of good genetics? Can you explain? Uh, about, well, well, we all know that, right? It's not really something we have to put in words. We know if somebody is good looking. It's it's objective. It's not subjective. Yes, you can have like a type, but everybody knows if somebody is good looking. Just, everybody knows. Um, it's just like it's a lot of stuff. It's like cheekbones. How far apart are your eyes? How is your nose? Like, does your nose have a like the thing? Like, is your nose, you know, more or less straight, or does it have the the thing, like, which makes, like, if a woman has that, it makes her incredibly ugly. If a guy has that, it also makes him ugly, but he's a bit more masculine, you could sometimes say, but like, oh, when a woman is super ugly, uh, you definitely need to get nose surgery for that. Uh, chin, jaw, very important. Uh, uh, um, uh, I forget what it's called. Lips to nose, like this thing, has to be relatively short. The longer it is, the uglier you're going to look like. Generally, the longer your face, the uglier you're going to look like, usually. Like like a horse face. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Um, but we all know this. Intuitively, we all know what good genes look like. Do you like shorter girls than you? Uh, yes, I think every pretty much everybody does, right? I think that's normal. Like PewDiePie, yeah, I've been told that over the years a lot. Uh, must be something uh, because we are from such close countries. Must be something genetic, simply. Uh, lagging again? Hmm. Weird. I'm using the data now. Do you think that scars can make you look more masculine? <laughs> scars. I, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe in some way. Yeah. Your new picture is noise. Thank you.
Are you still going to do any IRL wing festival stuff ever? Uh, most likely not, but you know, you never know. If I would see some anonymous for the voiceless somewhere randomly, I would probably go to them. Is low self-esteem a product of poor genetics? Yes, of course it is. Many people from southern Sweden seem to watch you. Very cool. Sweden is my favorite country in Europe. Yes, how I miss it. I still remember the days growing up in the small town called Rinkavik, which is like 100 kilometers south of uh, Stockholm. In uh, Rinkavik, uh, we uh, always played a bit uh, snowball uh, and we hit other kids. Uh, Spence. Yes, I am Swedish. Uh, like I said, that's where I grew up. I played with the snowballs always. Jeg elsker Ikea's kødsblære. Germany is my second favorite country. Yeah, I, I really like Sweden. Uh, because of what they're doing for the LGBTQ community also. Always when I go there I feel so accept <coughs> ah, so accepted. <coughs> uh, yes I've been to Ireland uh, uh, I've been uh, yeah to north and south. Hey Ratatosk Ratatosker, Happy New Year, man. Hope you're doing well with your wife and child. <coughs> oh, the air here. If a woman really likes a guy, he's good looking, can't you turn him down if he's a poor lover? What is a poor lover exactly? Explain that. 
Uh, Super Shape by Cameron is 100% grass fed whey protein bad for you. Whey protein is generally bad for you, yeah. Um, any kind of protein powder is bad for you. <clears throat> it messes with the digestion and uh, obviously it's just an isolated form of uh, protein. Uh, you're missing a lot of other micronutrients that would go along with it in natural whole foods. Uh, besides the chemicals used to process, and those are also toxic, so again, a problem in general with protein powders. <coughs> Jesus. I think there were some other uh, um, side effects in some studies with whey protein. I forgot what it was exactly. Very nice, uh, Ratatosk. Very glad to hear. Good. You've been on life for ages, have I? Oh, wow. I have been alive for ages. I don't know, it's so interesting to talk about these topics, I guess. It's been over three hours. In it. It's just because I haven't streamed in like two weeks, that's why. Yep. Two, over two weeks. Do you sunbathe in cold winter? Mm, I have sunbathed in snow, like my face. <laughs> it's kind of pointless. Uh, Super chat by Henry again. Here in Sweden, many people live alone. Sweden and Japan must be the most loneliest countries. I don't understand why, though. Any ideas? Ah, uh, that's interesting because I quite recently watched a video from Sweden where women were talking about guys and how they only want like a one night stand. They don't really want to be together, so to speak, with you. And um, so yeah, that uh, makes sense. I think it's, and I've watched videos from Japan also about dating and stuff uh, from this one guy. What's his name? Hashami, Hatami, or whatever from, from Japan, what's his name, something, probably some of you even know his channel, he makes a lot of street interviews in Japan, and yeah, people there are also saying that, um, yeah, they just, like, don't, they don't do any kind of dating, even, really, they just don't meet, they just don't meet up with anybody, yeah, they live alone, it's just, um, it's interesting because you think like if it's like a depopulation thing, then it would be in Sweden, but why in Japan? It's it's just how the culture got to be for whatever reason. I don't know. Any, I've never been to Japan, so I can't really say about Japan. And Sweden, I would have thought that it's more like a depopulation agenda because in Sweden, the government is promoting incredibly messed up stuff. So that would just be one of the things that's super messed up there that they promote like one night stands and... Uh, uh, no, not have any families. Uh, yeah, like I, I would see it more of a, as an agenda still. Like I don't think that that's just a coincidence, because Sweden was messed. The Swedish government is super messed up. The, uh, I mean, everything that's going on there with immigration also and uh, just accepting everybody from anywhere. It's over the top, really. So that's just one of the things. It's just, it's part of the same agenda. Yeah. Um, uh, and you say, why? Well, it's very easy to program a population, right? 
All you gotta do is make a few TV shows, so that's no a normal way to act, make a few hit music videos, and you already have a brainwashed population. There's not that much that you need to do. If the media, if the general media promotes this, that that's how you're supposed to live, uh, global warming, too many children are bad, then you already have a brainwashed population. Nowadays, you don't need to even put much effort effort into it. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to brainwash a population. So that's just what happened to Sweden. They don't want any more Swedish people. They don't want Swedish people to reproduce. Uh, super to be lethal. If someone is told that they have, uh, they may have MS. What would you recommend specifically diet wise for that, and what will worsen it? Good question. Um, of course, I would recommend you to, to watch the video uh, to watch the video with Raul that I did about MS, uh, multiple sclerosis. That's what he's talking about. Many many years ago, the ex vegan interview. He said a lot of good stuff there, and the way he healed it in the end. I also met him later, and he was doing good. Was through raw meat. Um, so that would, that's what I would recommend. Uh, there's people, there have been people who have healed it on a cooked carnivore diet by only eating cooked meat, but that's not going to work as good. Raul was eating all the organs, liver, heart. Uh, he was going hardcore because he was really messed up by the MS. That's what you need to do. And you got to avoid anything with any toxins, preservatives, any processed food whatsoever, uh, any grains, any vegetables. Uh, any like any any plant matter people just don't tolerate it in M ms and there's been books written about it so you need to completely be, eat super clean and really just eat ideally just grass fed no no medicine at all uh, raw meat raw organs uh, even uh, yeah just like the whole yeah nose to tail you know just every part of the animal that would be ideal eat the spine eat the bone marrow all of that stuff uh, that way you can actually heal multiple sclerosis depending on how bad it is uh, if it's bad then yeah it would take some years but every month basically you're gonna see improvements that's the only way but the thing is like raul was very motivated to do it and i think that if you're really sick you're just gonna do anything like yeah, when people get really sick, they, they stop caring about this because on my video comments, you will hear always stuff like, oh yeah, but like uh, cooked meat with, uh, I don't know, like sauce and pepper tastes so good. But, um, or like, I, I can't stop eating spaghetti with uh, cheese, you know? But when you get multiple sclerosis, all of this flies out of the window. Then it's like, oh, I'm sick. I need to heal. And then, then it's very easy to just go on a raw organ meat diet because you need because you're super sick. So it just depends on the degree of sickness that you get to. Really, that's what pushes everybody always to start eating really good. Uh, super chat by Real You. Would you recommend uh, a woman to marry for money instead of love, or make her own money and marry for love? What would you do if you were a girl that's a very interesting question so let me just reread it so i understand would you recommend a woman i guess you mean a woman not women a woman to marry for money so she would marry the guy for money instead of love or make her own money and marry for love what would you do if you were a girl uh so that's a topic that i kind of already talked about and i've talked about this a lot basically a man and a woman they don't really have much control over who they choose Let's say you grow up and you're incredibly brainwashed and you really, really care about money and you're like, you want to get the best job, you want to climb the career ladder and so on. And uh, that's what you care about. And you, you know, like that girl, the wizard Liz, and you like get super brainwashed by her videos. And you know, let's say you're like somewhat good looking as a girl, uh, like, uh, whatever, just like normal. And... Uh, you want to find uh, a guy who's someone uh, who someone looks like you, like who's as good looking as you, because you know he shouldn't be out of your league. And uh, he has also a good job; he can get you like a good house and blah blah blah. Okay, let's say you find this guy, 
and you're like, you go on a few dates with him, and you think like, this is the guy for me. He's as good looking as me. He has a good job, and I think that I can create a future with him. Let's go with him. I want to do it. Then the next day, you like go for dinner, and this guy walks up to you, and he has better genetics than the other guy, and turns out he doesn't have a good job, and he doesn't have a lot of money. But the first night, after you've been dating the other guy, who's somewhat average looking like you, you sleep without a condom with this guy. You, you do that, and you would do that, just because he has better genetics. And you would do that, and you would throw that all, all out of the window, and you wouldn't care about his job or his money just because of the genes, just because of reproduction. And that's the true nature of women and men. And you can't get you, know, you can't get it out of you. It's always going to be like this. Like, because think about these relationships with guys and girls who are together like for five years. They like go to university together. They want to get this career and become a doctor and whatever. But then like one day, this guy comes along who has better, better genetics than your husband, than your future husband, who you want to build a family with, and you sleep with him right away without a condom and you don't use protection. And this is the reality, just because he has better genes and he's better good looking, like he's better looking than your boyfriend, who you've been together with for four or five years and you want to build a family with. Because when, when a girl is really into you, she will right away sleep with you and she will beg you not to use a condom just because she's so into you. And where, whereas a girl, if she's not into you, she will say, let's study first and build, build, be, let's build a happy future together like th that's a girl who's really not into you <laughs> you can already know that she doesn't want to be with you and she hasn't really chosen you as a as a as a mate like an actual natural mate to mate with and um, so yeah to answer your question real love is attraction and if a girl is really attracted to you she will do anything for you and she will she will she will she will work for you man if a girl is into you she will go and work and she will just want you to impregnate her and make babies with her. Like she will do anything for you. That's true love. And that's what happens when, when you're really good looking, when you have, or when, at least above average looking and you're, you have a good height and you're strong. That's, yeah, that's true love. And I, I think that this answers your super chat, yeah. Uh, it's just like, it, it doesn't matter how brainwashed you get about money and jobs. Everybody chooses genetics at the end of the day. Somebody said, why you have such bad thinking of women? What, what's bad thinking about exactly? I don't understand what you mean. Did, did I say something that's bad about women? This applies to guys too, by the way. He's just that he was asking about women specifically. I've been dating my current girlfriend for almost six years and no kids have been produced. How over is it? It's completely over. It was since the first day, basically. It was over. If you, if you, if the girl isn't into you on the first date and doesn't want you to reproduce with her, it was already over. It, it, like, if you have this kind of relationship and you end up marrying the girl, She's going to divorce you and cheat on you eventually. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't want to laugh about it, but that's the reality. I dated an Italian, Italian girl, she was 25, only three months, and she wanted a kid no matter what. Yeah, you know? Yeah, it's like, I, if not the first days, within the first few weeks, latest, she has to, ha she has to want to have a child with you. It, because you gotta understand, like a girl has to be completely crazy about you, and... Um, 
if, if she isn't and she doesn't want to have a child, right? because you got to understand, nature always trumps man-made brainwash. If man-made brainwash, money, status, job, uh, a career, uh, building, building a family, building a house, building a future, if your genes don't trump this man-made garbage, the relationship is never going to last. Like you're always going to break up eventually. Your 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 genetics and your looks have to be go so good that it, it just like smashes the the unnatural garbage, and it's just like she forgets about it. She's like what career, what money? Like I want this guy to come inside of me. Like that's all that I want, basically. And uh, uh, pardon for using this language. Uh, what I mean, of course, is uh, come inside of my soul. I, I, I'm talking about the soul and how. She will come inside your soul, of course, and you will connect like two souls, obviously. Are you against arranged marriages? No, I think arranged marriages are good. Like, obviously, they're not natural, but I think it's way better than what people do nowadays. Um, I, it would be bad if the if you have an arranged marriage very early and then the guy or the girl turns out ugly. Yes, then it's bad. But generally, like an arranged marriage, which is forced, is better because they're most likely both going to be virgins and they're most likely going to have a way more lasting marriage than uh, anybody who marries nowadays, like in Europe or the US. <coughs> uh, another music mix on the way. Uh, yes, I will. I will post a music mix very soon. Yeah. Arranged marriages hinder genetic growth. True. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 you know, it is what it is. I gotta go. Uh, uh, gotta go pee. Uh, yeah. I'm not, okay. Yeah. I thought I should maybe stop the stream simply, but I want to continue a little bit. I'm just gonna go pee. I'll be right back.
You look like you're from Syria. Uh, Super Chebe Austin, uh, good to see you, man. Is there a natural way to get rid of uh, cyst on the skin? I have one on my scalp and uh, one on uh, one on my cheek. Hmm. I prefer, uh, I would prefer not to do surgery because scars and painkillers. True, if you do surgery on the uh, like on the face cheek. It will leave a scar. The skin on the face doesn't heal as well as uh, other parts of the body. So technically, that's a it's a good decision. It depends. Uh, cysts are tricky. I would have to see it uh, to give you my actual expertise because uh, cysts can, of course, just be pus. Essentially, a lot of white blood cells, uh, toxins formed. Could also be something else it depends on what the cyst is made out of and how big it is and how dense it is and blah 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 mm, you know we'd have to do kind of like a consultation see pictures and so on mm, use natural way uh, and not really if it was a very new cyst then of course you can literally just poke it yourself kind of like a pimple and get all of the stuff out but if it was a uh, anything uh, different, uh, which it probably is, if you've had it for a while anyway also, then uh, then there's going to be a problem, yeah, to get it out. Uh, definitely not by yourself. Uh, you say you have it on your skull. Hmm. Interesting, uh, most people never have cysts on their skull. It depends, man. It's really hard to answer because it depends on where it came from and what caused it. Watching uh, the dog. Um, super, yeah. So, yeah, anyway, man, uh, it's pretty hard to answer this kind of question without knowing more details. Uh, you, uh, I think they're epidermoids. Is let me check it out. Why? Ah, oh, okay, okay, yeah. So you're, you're not gonna do. You're not gonna get it out yourself. Um, probably, I would. Uh, but I don't think that mm, you could go to a dermatologist with this kind of stuff. I think they would actually be able to get it out. Yeah. Yeah, you don't even need like proper actual surgery for it. I guess it could be considered surgery, but uh, like a dermatology place would be able to, and even if not like on your scalp, if you have it, I mean, it's not even gonna be that visible, right? I think that you should be able to go to a surgeon and get it with very little scarring on the cheek. Depends, like I would always just think What's going to be better? Like, does the cyst look better? Or, like, what will what, what look worse? The cyst or the scar? I'm going to assume that almost always the scar would look better than the cyst. Uh, cysts are naturally off-putting, unattractive. I'm thinking about just taking the L and getting an uh, excision. Yes, uh, I think that it's a good idea, yeah. Uh, Super Chebeca, what kind of chair are you sitting in? Is it comfy? <laughs> it's, uh, it's very normal. Is it comfy? No. The only chairs that I find comfortable 
when I'm sitting at the computer is uh, like our the computer chairs where you can lean back. Those are the only ones that I find comfortable. Everything else is is never comfortable for the back or so. You gotta gotta sit as uh, straight as possible. Super chat by real you. Meaning behind luck, what causes it? Is it real or is it just coincidence? How does nature determine who wins the lottery or a casino? It, it is ran, it is random. Or or a casino, it is random. Or is it okay? I get it. Uh, casino, uh, yeah. Luck is generally absolutely a coincidence. I would say. I like I get very lucky in my life, but that doesn't mean that it's not a coincidence. That's just it. Just is what it is. Uh, <clears throat> um, yeah, like at the casino, yeah, it's complete gambling. It's, I mean, like if you play roulette, do you get red or do you get black? It's 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 a complete coincidence. It's like you would think that you're lucky if you bet on black and you get black, but uh, it's li literally just a man. -made. Well, I guess the best way you can uh, determine this is simply by knowing it's man-made, right? It doesn't have any, there's no natural influence on it, really. It's just like a man-made game that you play where man, and the man, the result is man-made and everything is man-made about it. I mean, I guess you could say physics are natural, that's about it, but yeah, of course, it's complete coincidence. I mean, everybody who's sane knows that when you go to a casino, it's like, you know, 50-50, well, now it's more like, a, it's not 50-50, that would mean that there's still some fairness to it, it's more so that it's, the casinos, uh, the casino always has the advantage, so it's more like 53, 47, uh, probably like 53 for the casino, if you're playing uh, uh, a lot of the games, and even worse chances if you're playing other stuff, uh, yeah, I would never recommend going to a casino, I went to a casino in Las Vegas, for the sake, like, I thought, I'm in Las Vegas, I should go to the casino for fun, I put in $50 in the roulette, I made, like, 80 then I went down to, like, 25 and then I put 25 on, like, whatever, red, one back, won my 50 back and just left the roulette table, that's it, I played for like 5 to 10 minutes, it was totally stupid, it's just, it's ridiculous, man. <laughs> um, yeah, so luck is complete coincidence, it's nothing. Uh, you see, it, it has no natural influence, there's nothing natural about it, uh, like... You know, we were talking about genetics and uh, like somebody would, for example, say, oh, I'm so lucky, I always get these jobs. They probably get the jobs because they, they look good. Like if you are if you have good genes, you're usually going to get the job over somebody who's even more qualified than you because uh, good people attract people. Like a good looking receptionist is going to attract a lot more customers than an ugly looking receptionist who's qualified and has 20 years experience in the job. Uh, yes, there's, you would choose somebody who's qualified if she works in the back and nobody sees her, but anybody who's visible in the business, it's going to be better if she's good looking rather than being qualified for the job. And the same goes for guys also. Um, actually, this reminds me, there was this Korean anime which came out recently called Lookism, which uh, is about this ugly f uh, fat guy who wakes up with a, an attractive body and he is employed by this receptionist and then when he appears in the good looking body, the receptionist right away thinks, well, I'm sorry, I mean the, the boss of the place is always like a gas station. So the, the job would be more so uh, like a cashier. So the 
boss thinks, oh, he's going to bring me so much money and so many customers because he's so good looking. And people are always going to come back to the gas station or to the convenience store, whatever it was, to to buy stuff there just because he's good looking, which is true. And it, it doesn't matter if you have like a trustful or a good cashier. It's it's way better if the cashier is good looking because he's going to attract customers. Anyway, a little bit off topic, but uh, so yeah, not, nothing really has to do with, uh, uh, not, there's nothing natural about luck. Uh, I think, think that people always confuse uh, luck with the way they actually look like and stuff like that. They're a little bit unaware of themselves. So, Bridget Bell, Rock Lobster, what causes Amelia white cysts near the eyes? I've never heard of it. Uh, I can only look it up. Hmm, interesting. Then that just looks like something I would like to pop. Like I just want to like press it out. It looks like like a pimple. I think that you can just get it out. Like just peek, uh, poke a needle inside of it and just press it out. It's just like white pus, white hard pus. What causes it? The same as pimples, I think. It really looks a lot like it. So it's detox detoxification through the skin. That's what most cysts are. Why are people obsessed about hair? Men shouldn't care about hair. Hmm. I don't know about that. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, it's more natural for women because of their hormones to keep their hair and not have hair loss. That's true. But it's not as if men should also naturally lose their hair. It's just because of bad genes through many generations. Is that as if men in nature lose their hair? Like, look at native Indians. They have, uh, they don't even have, get gray hair and, until whatever, 70, 80, whatever, they have full hair because of their ancestors who ate a lot of meat and raw meat and so on and didn't consume the grains and all the toxins and whatnot. Um, in uh, Europe and uh, in Europe, we have terrible genetics uh, simply for many generations. That, that's that's it really of course it's natural for a man to also have good hair super chat by austin link does diet influence hair loss you mentioned that it's genetic but at 18 it surely is a normal girls are attracted to me anyway but uh I want to try to reverse it to be more attractive. Is it just over? Okay, interesting question. I just was talking about it. Um, yeah, okay. It's uh, it's an interesting topic. It's a, it's a deep topic. Uh, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, so firstly, yes, uh, hair loss comes from your ancestors. And does that influence it? Yes. If you're genetically predetermined to have hair loss, a bad diet is going to... Uh, make it a lot quicker for sure uh, like uh, like I, I have a half brother and you know I think uh, the gene comes from the mother's side anyway so maybe it's not so influenced but uh, I have a half brother who was completely bald at 27 uh, like almost completely you know and uh, maybe I would have been also honestly I think if I didn't eat, start eating raw meat before that I think I would have lost all of my hair at this point already, quite possibly. So I think that you can definitely slow it down if you eat, 
Because, you know, most people who care about, like, hair and hair loss, they don't eat raw meat. So we don't have anything to compare it to. We, we just have people who are using a lot of products and whatever to stop it. Um, yeah, so that's the thing. Um, but, like, again, I think it... My grandfather, from my mother's side, still had hair when he was, like, 80 years old. Not He had some baldish spots, but he still had hair... And usually it comes from that side, so probably my half-brother has different genes than me, hair-wise. But I think it's still, like, there definitely still is a lot of connection. Anyway, okay, so that's that. Uh, well, that's, that's just me, that's, that's my... That, I'm just sharing my private situation. Uh, um, ge- generally, yes, it's genetic and... Uh, the, th- the reason women don't lose their hair is because they don't produce as much testosterone and um, like the other form of testosterone, DHT, is what goes to the hair follicles and makes them fall out. But there's also theories as to why this happens. Some people say like, oh yeah, it's just like there's not enough blood flow. Then the thing though is what you got to think about, like I said before at the start of the stream, Testosterone is also used as detoxification. It's an antioxidant, which most men don't know about. Most people don't know that the testosterone is an antioxidant and that it fights toxins. What if we eat terrible diets, it goes to our scalp and to our brains, and then the DHT tries to help to detox, and, and in the same time, it makes you lose the hair. Uh, and we basically, we lose hair because we have eat horrible diets are super toxic and the DHT helps us to get detox the hair out of our scalps it's also what a lot of people are theorizing about because testosterone does help you with detoxing so it makes some sense Uh, then some people just think that DHT in general is bad for you that's why you take finasteride to stop it completely in the body and that's it I don't know if if it's that simple maybe but uh, uh, anyway, it's just some men are sensitive to this and some men are not. And that's it. And some men are unlucky, <laughs> talking about luck, that they are born this way, that their ancestors have these kind of genes and they are so sensitive to DHT and they end up losing the hair. Maybe maybe it's just that. Maybe it's a bit deeper. Maybe it has really to do with terrible diets and toxicity also for a large part uh, it just hasn't been studied enough and i don't think it ever will be studied enough for us to fully understand it unfortunately um yeah i definitely definitely think that for sure you can at least slow down your hair loss with by eating raw meat that i definitely believe so anyway i, I remember how you look like austin uh from uh yeah, from our talks, so I know that you had a bald head, and I did know that you look relatively young, so I guess you're saying that you lost your hair at 18 already. Uh, yeah, it, it isn't normal, naturally speaking, it maybe is normal, genetically speaking, for you, or maybe your diet was a typical American diet, and uh, then it just prolonged hair loss, and it, uh, not prolonged, I mean, uh, what, how do you say it, it just, it made it quicker, that's why you already lost uh, large part of it at 18 that happens that's rare but it happens to a lot of people uh anyway you said girls are attracted to me anyway well yes and you know not not a lot of women don't care about hair uh well maybe they care about it but it's not like the most important thing to them looks wise it isn't the most important thing but it does shape your face a lot I, i i i gotta add to this i think that the most attractive Not the most attractive, but one of the most attractive people I ever saw in my life (coughs) was this one guy in Berlin who walked from uh, the metro station up the stairs and he was where he was completely bald, like completely no hair at all. And um, he was wearing like a white t-shirt. I just can't forget him because he looked super attractive. So there's definitely something that definitely bald, completely bald guys can still look very attractive. Like I would put him in the top 10 most attractive men I ever saw in my life. Um, so it's important, but it doesn't, it does, it's not everything about you. It doesn't determine everything about your looks. 
uh, I want to try to reverse it to be more attractive. Is it just over? I can't say that because uh, I, I don't really know. Like from what I remember, your hair was just completely shaved off. So I don't know. Do you still have some hair? If you still have some hair, for sure you can do something about it. If you don't at all, if you only have like hair on the sides, like which is very bad, then there's nothing you can do about it. But uh, isn't this, like your life isn't over. It's okay. You can totally. You can totally get even good-looking girls still, even if you're completely bald. Uh, like, if, if your face is attractive, you can still be pretty well off. Um, let me see if you wrote anything in the meantime. Nothing. No, I refuse to take medication, you said. Okay, and that's uh, fine. Again, medication isn't going to cause any new hair to grow. Medication is only going to keep the hair that you have. Um, like if you're like 20 right now, like if you're watching this live stream and you're starting to lose hair, would I recommend getting on medication? No, because I think you could mess up. If you, except if you never want to have children, I don't know why that would be, but then yes. Then I would recommend getting on medication because you're going to keep your hair, whatever you have still. It's almost, it's it's very hard to lose hair if you're on medication, like finasteride. But uh, if you want to have children, I wouldn't risk it. Maybe use a topical form of it, uh, like I mentioned before. I don't know, but I don't know if that could enter your system and still mess up uh, your your hormones and you could end up having like deformed children. I, so I don't want to recommend it to anybody. It's, the problem, the biggest problem is children, really. Uh, infertility in children. <coughs> uh, somebody that said it's a gay moment because I said the guy was attractive. Uh, why well, you can you can objectively say if a guy is attractive, right? You would have to be. It's more of a gay thing and insecurity if you're gonna say, "Well, men are not men don't look attractive. All men are ugly." That's uh, that's 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 more of an insecurity that you have, because every man can objectively say if a guy is good looking, that's okay. There's nothing bad about it. It doesn't mean that you are attracted to them. But if a good-looking guy walks past you, of course you can objectively say that guy has good genetics, he's good-looking. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. The whole chat, chat was kidding. I don't know. Nowadays you can tell, honestly. Um, you... People are weird. <laughs> anyway, man, I, I hope that uh, my answer helps you somewhat. Uh, I, I think you look pretty all right from what I remember. Nothing to worry about either way. Uh, your head was completely shaved, so I can't tell how much hair you have left, so I can't comment on it, really. Uh, super chat by Real You. <coughs> how to lose fat fast cardio. I have zero motivation. Uh, fast uh, cardio zero motivation start eating raw meat start eating raw organs raw liver from healthy animals very healthy animals of course you're gonna have a lot more motivation you're gonna be producing different kind of hormones which will motivate you to look better to do just to do, just to have everything better uh, everything better going for you in your life that that you gotta do anyway and that would maybe then motivate you to do some cardio. I don't recommend cardio in general, obviously. Cardio is very good to lose weight because it's very stressful for the body, but it's very unhealthy also. In your case, uh, start eating on, only lean meat and, and liver. Qu ca quit all carbs. Most important thing, quit all carbs. Go zero carb. And ideally also quit all fat or almost all fat because you're going to otherwise be using that as energy. And do, if you want to lose fat quickly, then also do exercise. You can, <coughs> you can't lose, uh, Jesus, <coughs> my throat is so dry. You can't lose uh, fat quickly without um, exercising. 
Yeah, it's definitely a must. Uh, super chat by Joy. A friend of mine had his appendix busted and infected. The doctors gave him antibiotics and the infection got better and he started to feel better. Where, where antibiotics good in the situation? Okay, so I talked about this like an hour ago, but uh, I'll just repeat it. The reason antibiotics work, and in this kind of situation, they absolutely work, is because, not because of the antibacterial properties, those are just toxins, those are not good for you at all, but antibiotics are anti-inflammatory, and uh, <coughs> wow. if there's inflammation in the body, it can actually literally, like, reducing the symptom of inflammation <coughs> oh, I need to drink something. I'm gonna go get a drink in a second. Can actually help you. So, like, let's say you have... <coughs> I can't talk anymore. Let's say you have uh, inflamed arteries and you are, you're about to get, like, uh, atherosclerosis. Like, your, art or your arteries are getting... <coughs> Jesus Christ. Your arteries are getting really narrow. Actually taking like uh, statins also, not, okay, statins, no, statins, statins, statins also are anti-inflammatory, but they're, they're, again, they're going to have the side effect of reducing cholesterol, and this is going to kill you. Antibiotics are going to destroy your health because of the antibacterial properties, but they would help in the situation because of the inflammation, like with the appendix, because it's busted and infected, it's completely going to reduce the inflammation, and that, that can actually be healing the same, the same way you could heal your arteries by making them normal again. Um, so that's the thing. You could have, have anti-inflammatory drugs, which could help you just as well. <coughs> oh my God. But uh, be, like they could just make drugs which are anti-inflammatory without all these bad side effects. Like antibiotics don't need to be antibacterial and toxic. And they would help you just, well, even better, but uh, it helped him, uh, well, her, whatever, just because uh, of that, just because it was reducing the inflammation in this area of the appendix so significantly. And then it probably also destroyed the gut uh, if it was pills. Um, yeah, if it wasn't pills, it may actually be better if it was uh, through the veins. Yeah, so were the antibiotics good? Well, no, but the anti-inflammatory properties of the antibiotics were good, yes. Uh... <coughs> uh, let me drink something quickly, I can't continue like this. Great log, super chat. As a man, how to be good in bed and stay hard. <laughs> but <laughs> that's like that's like what somebody else was for asking me for. I think about being a good lover. Um, like it. So it, <clears throat> there's no such thing, essentially. Like I understand because you're paying with British sterling. I understand that it's hard for you to stay hard because you're together with British women, but uh, imagine being, like always, if you're with a British woman, and imagine that it's not a British woman, that it's somebody outside of Britain, then it's going to be a lot easier, of course, automatically, obviously. Naturally, <laughs> joke, jokes aside, um, like, how to stay hard? How can you not be hard if you find her attractive? If you're not hard, you just don't find her attractive. Like, the more attractive you find somebody and the more you want to reproduce with her, the more, the harder you're going to be. And then you can, you can also be uh, desperate and you haven't had the, you haven't been intimate with anybody for weeks. Then yes, then you're gonna, 
go for anybody, but then you're gonna very quickly not find her attractive anymore. And so that, that's why I always say, if you plan to like marry somebody and really be together with them, she has to be very attractive. And the same goes for the woman. She has to find the guy very attractive because the marriage isn't gonna last. Like you're eventually gonna end up being like brother and sister living together, maybe having like two children, almost never being intimate with each other. This kind of relationship is gonna be terrible. One or the other is gonna cheat. Like the guy or the girl is gonna cheat eventually because they're because they don't really want to be together with. So I really recommend for people to find to be only together with people that they find really attractive. Everything else is meaningless at the end of the day. Like, don't have children with somebody you don't find really attractive. Uh, so that's as far as the staying hard part goes. It really, it shouldn't be a problem. If you have a problem, uh, then you generally have a phys- like a physical problem, you know, because it's not normal, obviously. It's not natural. Uh, how to be good and bad, bad? Well, I mean, I can't really talk about this on YouTube anyway in detail. So what, what can I even say? Uh, I, I would say there is no such thing as being good in bed because uh, if the girl's really into you, she's going to be very wet. Can I say this? I guess by wet, of course, I mean her hair is going to be wet, obviously, not what you think, just to make it clear. And if she's really wet, like she has really wet hair, then that's, that's already a sign she's incredibly into you. And it really doesn't matter. Like, it, nothing beyond that matters because whatever you do she's going to be incredibly aroused like it doesn't even matter what you do in what way you do it there is no such thing as good and bad there's only good and bad when she doesn't find you attractive if a girl finds you attractive you can do whatever you want you can literally touch her with your fingers and she's gonna go crazy that's that's but that, that's what i mean you as a girl or as a guy have to find somebody that you're really really into don't bother being with guy, people that you're like somewhat into, but like you don't really find them attractive. You gotta be like crazy about them. And then you don't need to do anything. There's nothing good or bad you can do. Everything that you will do as a guy will be perfect because she's so into you. Okay. Uh, somebody said also stop watching uh, prawn definitely stop watching prawn uh, that could definitely influence uh, the last part of your question yeah all right uh, super chat by become ungovernable <laughs> nice uh, nice name oh it's a british quid again uh, I don't think it's possible to not be ungovernable in Britain. Do you still sleep on the floor? I don't sleep on the floor anymore right now because I'm moving a lot. And uh, I gave up at the point because uh, like I, the way I slept on the floor was usually on a carpet. So it's somewhat soft because the earth in nature is not hard like, uh, you know, like a wooden floor. So that's also not normal. Uh, a carpet gave me like this little bit of softness, which I, which I liked, and maybe like a blanket under it at, at most. But now, like when I'm at places, there's like no like okay, there is a carpet here, but it, it's just not convenient anymore. Uh, that's really the main reason. Otherwise, I definitely still agree with sleeping on uh, the floor compared to like a soft mattress because I always slept better on an actual floor. Yeah.
man, these super chats. I mean, I can't even talk about this anyway in detail on YouTube. So, yeah. So, thoughts on Oral is free X? I don't even know what you're talking about, really. But like, um, thoughts on it? Uh, it's nice. Like, what can I say? <laughs> it's I I I think it's natural. Uh, yeah, I think it's natural from both sides, from men and women, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, just no question about it. It's pleasurable and good. Super chat by Austin. Um, is it normal that I refuse girls without certain traits, like blonde hair and blue eyes? My family is very German, and I want to pass down those genes. Sometimes I'm attracted to others, but I say no. Sometimes you are attracted to others. Also, you. So you actually think about passing down your genes. So it's like a logical decision that you're making, even though you sometimes do find others attractive. That's interesting. I never, <coughs> what the hell? Um, I never, I never thought of, uh, I never thought of it like that. I, I uh, for me, there's like a limit. Like, like I've said in many streams, like, it doesn't matter how objectively good genes, like, a Latina woman has, I cannot find her attractive. It's impossible for me. Like, like that other model from before, I can see that she's pretty, but I could never be together with her. I would rather choose, like, a blonde, ugly girl than a Latina, beautiful girl, because I can't imagine being together with them. Uh, so I could understand that part but like when it comes to like browner hair hair or somebody who's like north german or austrian who have like dark brown hair i wouldn't really care about that so much like for me it wouldn't matter you know otherwise i would have only went to latvia and looked for somebody who's also 100 percent like baltic i that that's a bit extreme i wouldn't go that far yeah definitely not but uh, like I, I could understand that um, I could understand like blue green eyes instead of like brown eyes, but that's basically what I'm talking about. Like 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 a Latina girl would have brown eyes usually. Um, yeah. Um, somebody said just go for what you want. Well, yeah, exactly. At the end of the day. Uh, you, you already know what you want and that's that's who you want to have children with and that's you who should you should go for um sometimes attracted to others but it's in, uh, um, well anyway yeah it's normal naturally to refuse girls that you don't like if you naturally don't like them if you logically set this goal to only have blonde, blue-eyed girlfriend, like a girlfriend, or to have somebody to have children with, I don't know. Maybe it could be that you could find somebody also with like darker hair attractive, who could still have like blonde, uh, blue or green eyes at least. You maybe you would in the end fit together better with her. I mean, I, I would definitely give a chance to somebody like that too, seeing as you say that you naturally find her attractive too. And Germans aren't blonde and blue-eyed also, Ger more, for the most part. Maybe in the very north by the Baltic, uh, like North Sea, yes. But Germans are for the most part brown-haired and uh, green-eyed, if not even brown-eyed and very soft. Um, 
Uh, I don't really see Germans as like blonde. Uh, for me, well, not for me. It's just how it is. Blonde people are Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians, Latvians, Lithuanians, Estonians, Finnish, Swedish, Norwegian, Icelandic. Maybe some British people, not really. Yeah, like North, North, North uh, Scottish people, Irish maybe. More there's also red, uh, red haired. Danish people are blonde, very blonde. Polish sometimes, like North Polish, yeah. That's about it. That's blonde people. Everything below that really you already start seeing a lot of brown and even dark brown hair, and not so many blue eyes, but green eyes. If you want blonde people, really it's like Finnish people. When I went to Finland, it was just like, what is this place? Like everybody has light blonde hair and blue eyes. Like it was crazy. Uh, I, and I was in North Finland, so I was seeing like the blondest people on earth, which was nice. I mean, they're, they're a very nice, like nice genetic humans, like very nice genes. Uh, it's, I, I do admire those people. Uh, Vetetus said, all Germans north of the Roman lines, north of Bavaria or so, used to be 90% blonde and blue eye. Changed a lot, though. A lot. Hmm, okay. Well, it would make sense, seeing as Germany really is also very cold. And Then again, I was looking up the weather for fun in Berlin. Uh, just now, yesterday, it was 10 plus degrees Celsius. And in Latvia, in Riga, it was minus 10 Actually, minus 11, so there was a 21 degree difference. So uh, Germany is quite a lot warmer. I think, to me, it makes sense why they already don't look as blonde. And they are quite hot summers, whereas in uh, in Latvia, the summers are like spring. Like, they, it never really gets hot. It gets to like 24 degrees Celsius. That's, that's like hot summer in Latvia. It never really was, I also remember from my childhood, never really was hot, like... You could hardly ever go out with t-shirt and shorts and so on. Yeah, the weather got much warmer. Yeah, oh, you're right. Well, you're right, actually. The weather did get warmer. Not global warming warmer, but when you look at old footage, like it used to snow in October in Germany, and now it doesn't anymore. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. So, I, I agree with you. Austin said, I'm naturally attracted to girls similar to me, but others are also physically attractive to me, just not as much. In some ways, it is logical. Hmm. Yes. So, yes. Well, at the end of the day, yes, we are attracted to people who are similar to us. That's the most important thing. Even if she has, like, darker hair than you, if she has similar face features, you're going to be attracted to her. Super chat by Robert from Britain, probably because he's pawing with quid in it, which is my favorite currency right now. Hey man, shouldn't you be saying hi, white? Once you mentioned that after giving up salt and going raw, you have gone through some uh, tough symptoms, a healing crisis, I suppose. Could you talk a bit about that? It's very interesting because I always said in my videos that I never had any problems after I went raw. And because people always ask me, did you also have these detox symptoms and like this and that? And I always said, no, I had no side effects when I started eating raw. So I wonder what you're referring to. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. You said, I am Hungarian, actually. Oh, okay, man. <laughs> um, interesting. Once you mentioned you're giving us salt and going wrong. Oh, man, really, I didn't. So, let just to give you a perspective, I was raw vegan. Uh, I was before that. So, a year before raw meat, I was raw vegan, yeah? 
then uh, I uh, I was fasting a lot also. I was hospitalized. Uh, I almost died basically. Yeah, basically I almost did die. Then uh, then I started eating cooked a cooked ketogenic diet. Didn't really heal me, and then I started eating raw meat, which healed me. So maybe that's what you're referring to. That I was still healing from the raw veganism. That's the only thing that I could maybe. That's the only thing that you could maybe mean. Uh, if that's what you mean, uh, yes, my health got a lot better. Like, I've, I literally had no feeling in my chest. I think my nerves had died off. So I could literally touch here, and I had no feeling here. No joke. And there, um, I think there were even more parts of my body which I had no feel. But I think only remember really this one. Like I, I could touch it here, and there was no feeling at all. So. Uh, Slowly with cooked keto it came back, but really with raw meat I regained all, all of my feeling here. So like I really regenerated from the damage. Uh, I had uh, I had problems when I was walking, like um, I was like like uh, stumbling, like my foot was like my walking was setting out. Uh, um, how do you say? Like my knees were like me, my knees didn't work all of a sudden for like a split second. That also completely went away with raw meat. Uh, yeah, I slept a lot better, generally was a lot happier and so on. So yes, I healed from the veganism from the year before that. That's about it. There was no, there was no healing crisis or such in general from eating raw meat or something. Uh, or when I stopped eating salt, I was pretty much not eating any salt when I was doing cooked keto also. Uh, I just stopped eating salt altogether because, uh, well, because no process, well, it's not processed, the food isn't processed and you're not going to add salt to like a raw steak. I know that very few people do that, I don't understand that, I find it super disgusting. Yeah, there's nothing that you would be adding salt to when you're eating completely raw. That's why I just naturally stopped eating salt because it's not found in nature and uh, yeah, it's not naturally part of the human so-called diet. But it's just what you naturally do when you start eating raw meat. Never had any side effects from it. Uh, it, it just felt good. That's it. Uh, yeah, that's the only thing I can tell you. Uh, Super chat by Lucas. Hey, Gautis, you look very Swedish. I found both men and women very attractive in Sweden. The same goes to Italians, but in a more dark spectrum. Nice hair, mate. <clears throat> Thank you very much uh, for the compliment. Um, so, I, I am from Latvia. Genetically, I'm 100% Baltic, as I because I did a gene test, DNA test, and actually found out. And uh, that's right across the sea of Sweden. And uh, always when we went to the sea as children, we always said, ah, oh, there's Sweden over the water. So, I am gen genetically very close to Sweden, which would make sense why... I, I, I could look somewhat Swedish. It makes perfect sense. <coughs> Basically, ancestral like my ancestors probably partly were from Sweden and went from one, one coast to the other. It makes perfect sense why I have some Swedish looks and why people compare me to PewDiePie quite often over the years. They did at least. Um, um, yeah. Uh, men and women attractive in Sweden, yeah, yeah, I could I could agree with that. Yeah, they have good genes. Swedish people are quite beautiful for the most part. Yeah, um, I can't agree with Italians, but that's again my thing. I just don't. <coughs> I think I find Italians the most ugly people in Europe. Yeah. Usually the women have a weird nose, like a, like a thing here, or like a big nose and a long face. But yeah, nothing against Italians, I just, I, I can't change it, like, I hate the country, and I find the people ugly, I just can't change it. It's just like, what can I do? I find them, like, they have, they're too dark, like, they're too mixed, I think they're too mixed. The thing is, who knows how original Italians used to look like? Italians are very mixed with Arabs because the Greeks are mixed with the Turkish and the Arabs 
and Cyprus and all the islands, all the Arabs, and they went to Italy and mixed with the Italians. Um, that that's the thing. Uh, I I don't know. Maybe you know. Yeah, maybe the perfect Italian jeans are really nice looking. Anyway. Superchat by become ungovernable again. Do you think that Western civilization will fall, fail? Um, will fall, fail, whatever. Yes. Like, if you're talking about immigration, economy also possibly, food, uh, like banning of meat, uh, uh, the global warming thing. Is it going to work? Absolutely. Uh, digitalization of money, chipping of people. Yes, it's happening. Nobody's going to stop it. Uh, everybody is a loser in, in Europe. Uh, people make me sick. I'm so disgusted and embarrassed by European people, man. Like even in these other countries, in these Muslim countries, when I see these, when I just like hear the freaking German language or like the Dutch people everywhere. Hey, yeah, that is hell good, yeah, man. I just want to like go up to them, like go back to your country, kick out all the immigrants and... Uh, Oh, never mind. Uh, I really like the immigration policies of Europe. Actually, sorry about saying that. Uh, it was just a moment of insanity. I, of course, uh, am very pro. Uh, actually, I think that um, the immigrants brought a lot of um, uh, cultural um, uh, gifts and um, they gifted our countries. Actually, it was a gift for our countries. Never mind about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> jokes aside, it's like, I see all of these uh, freaking uh, Europeans. Uh, it, it's just like, they have no, uh, I don't know what the word is, they have no integrity. It's like they have lost everything. They have no, uh, no feeling of home, they have no respect for themselves, no respect for their country, their own people. They're completely lost, like they don't belong anywhere. It's just like, it's just like Germany is such a terrible country. It's just like so lost. It's like, yes, they're gonna ban meat, everybody's gonna accept it. Yes, they're gonna go get chipped. Yes, they already got something else inside of them, if you know what I mean. Yes, they all went for it and begged for it. Yes, they will beg the government to, right now, that's what they're doing. They're banning uh, cash. You can only pay with 10K cash maximum. So you can't, can't buy a property anymore with cash or nothing. Anything beyond 10K you can buy. Uh, like, they're going to beg for it. And it's, it's just, like, so disgusting. And I just want to, like, yeah, you know, yeah, man. Like, we, we got to this point. Like, Germany is such a disgusting country. I just want to, yeah. And it's really one of the worst in Europe. And like the Dutch people and the Belgian people, French people are still kind of okay. Spanish are still kind of okay. Italians are still, I don't like Italians the way they look like, but they're, I like their integrity. Uh, Bulgarians are super cool people, really respect the Bulgarians. Um, Ukrainians, well, unfortunately, they're uh, out of the country. Ukrainians were really cool. Well, there's, they still are, but I uh, don't know what's going to happen with the country. I think it's going to turn into a new world order, hellhole. Romanians are still cool. Polish, Polish are also cool. Uh, Danish are super terrible. Swedish also, just disgusting people. Really, they have lost everything. Uh, they just say like, the country. Ugh. Well, the French, the French aren't so cool anymore. I gotta say, but the French. Well, at least that's a story. They they removed the mon monarchy with the French Revolution and everything. The French people used to be very tough. They're not that tough anymore, but I would still put them way above, like Germans and Dutch people and all of these losers.
Yeah, well, yes, I do live in Germany, and uh, that's why I find it so disgusting. I don't even like being there, and uh, I don't like being around the people, really. And I don't, I don't, I just don't associate it with anything good anymore. Uh, Super chat by Tall Blonde, thoughts on Sun Paku eyes. Uh, let me check, I forget what they look like. Uh, so it's like... Um, my thoughts on that, I, I don't know, really. Uh, from the images, it looks like a lot of people who are considered attractive have those kind of eyes. But what do they mean? I don't know. Does anybody in the chat know anything about them? I'm not really so informed about it. Yeah, I, uh, somebody said I'm French and it's true, everyone sees it. Yeah, I, I, uh, I still like, I still find France to be the best country in Europe. Uh, even though they really went along with the unicorn thing, kind of, they, they, they were forced to, kind of, I don't know. I would have expected them to fight back a bit more, but whatever. Um, well, they had really bad regulations because of how the government was afraid of them. Generally, like, the food is so great and uh, the nature and the culture and everything. Uh, France is really the best country in Europe, I would say. Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's getting worse and worse. Uh, I don't know. And you can still live in France, in the middle of France which is uninhabited really for the most part and uh, live pretty isolated from the brainwashed culture society. Southern France, Ossetina, Satata, Ossetania used to be Muslim. I've never heard about that, it's interesting. I wonder when that was. Yeah, and uh, I was I was living in France for like eight months last year, and uh, I met a lot of French people, and uh, for the most part, I had really good experiences. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so this was a very long stream. Um, I slept very long today, so I wasn't tired during the stream. Anyway, guys, uh, yeah, I think over four hours is quite a lot. Uh, we talked about a lot of topics. Um, yeah, so yeah, it was very interesting. It was very interesting. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah. No, it was good, it was good. Good, good topics, uh, good, good talks. Yeah, good 2023 opening stream. Uh, yeah, send me some videos to respond to, to review again. Uh, but I already have some for this week, but maybe for next week. Uh, yeah, and that's about it. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for joining, and um, I'll see you next week. Yep, as always. All right. See you then.